All right, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, thank you for joining us today uh, for um, what is going to be a special, special uh, one-off session, uh, one of a kind. Um, I have arranged for one of, uh, in my opinion, one of the best educators on the platform, um, Kevin Sprout, to do a special session for us. Um, Typically in these environments, you will have somebody covering, you know, FX or, or HFX or crypto. Uh, Kevin is actually going to cover both uh, FRX and also HFX uh, for us in one go. And I'm just going to let a few more people into the room um, and then we will crack, uh, get started. Um, just going to do a quick check. How's everyone doing today? You know, if, uh, a 10, um, you know, having an amazing day, you know, eight, not so, you know, good, but it could be better. Uh oh. <laughs> We've got 8.5s, 8s, 8s. Okay, okay, good. 10, 10, 10 from Sonia. Abigail's at 8. All right, so everyone's having a good 9 from Becky. Nice, nice, nice. So, what's making everyone happy today? Is it the sun? Is it the charts today? You've been catching pips today? Pips and the sun? <laughs> I'll just send the uh, baby with his big brother. Sun and rest, pips and sun, definitely the sun. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Sun, yeah, everyone's saying the sun. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Okay, I know I've asked Kevin just to jump on um, about five minutes past the start time, so he should be here shortly. Um, but yeah, as a quick, you know, introduction um, for those that don't know me, um, I'm Sean. Let me just turn this one up on mute. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, sorry. So for those that don't know me, I'm Sean. I'm part of Courage Five Hundred. Um, been in the academy since. July last year, um, I opened my live trading account in September. Um, a large part of my growth, um, well, all of my growth is down to the academy, to be fair. Um, you know, everything that I've learned is through the academy. Um, there's educators in particular that I owe a lot of gratitude to. Uh, Kevin Serrano being one of those educators. Um, you know, he, you will see the way he analyzes the market in today's special session. Um, you know, it, it takes practice and dedication to get to that level um, but you can see that once you get to that level the kind of consistency that you can that you can achieve on a regular basis so I'm grateful he's agreed to come on and kind of share his you know his wisdom with us uh, today um, we were due to have this session a couple of weeks ago um, but Kevin um, on that same day um, welcomed the birth of his baby girl um, and um, yeah obviously we had to rearrange which was 
perfectly fine. And he reached back out to me and said, you know, he's happy to, you know, happy to reschedule for today. I can see he's just joined all the way there in the US. Um, so I'll just let a couple more people in and then we will, we will crack on. Okay, so full introduction. Um, Kevin Serrano, I can see you. Um, I can see you are, I can see you smiling. Um, absolutely thrilled for you to be here. Um, you know, the, the team will tell you that I sing your praises all the time. You know, I was on your go live session today. I know we smacked up on EuroCAD, uh, free and free for the week. Um, you know, guys, this guy is phenomenal. His track record is second to none. You know, very rarely do I go on a session with Kevin Serrano and I don't secure pips. It's, 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 it's insane. You know, uh, sometimes I, I pitch myself. It's, it's literally, I put, I put the put those all orders in. I go into the garden with the kids. I come back and then it's hit TP. And the, the consistency levels is just off, you know, off, off, off the chain. Um, but I really want him just to really share his, his, his wisdom with us. Um, he is the founder of London Payout. Um, so many of us will be familiar with Dr. Caffey, with Anastasia, with Nick. Uh, Kevin Serrano is actually the founder, the godfather of London Payout. Um, you know, he, he, he co-founded it with Dr. Caffey. Um, he is the man who, you know, who, who, who holds the whole um, team together, um, but he does his work you know, very much in the background. Um, but his sessions are incredibly fun. He's always playing music. You can hear his little girl in the background sometimes now. She's, I think, two weeks old. Um, and he's just got, he's got such great energy about him, such great calmness. Um, you know, the, when he looks at the market, he's just patience, he's calm. Um, and you can just see it, somebody who's got so much experience that, you know, one of the things that I struggled with when I first started um, was just rushing into trades, always wanting to place the trade. And what I love about how Kevin does his sessions is if there's not a trade set up, you don't take it. And, you know, I'd much rather that approach than jumping into four or five trades for the day um, and then, you know, losing three or four. So, you know, very, very calm trader, uh, you know, extremely proficient. But yeah, I'll, I'll hand over to Kevin. I'll shut up now. Uh, Kevin Serrano, I can see you. Um, I will uh, hand over to you. Hey, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Good. Hi, everyone. I know we're supposed to have this call last week, uh, two weeks ago, but... Um, that specific day, uh, my little one, actually, my daughter decided to, to be born early. Her due date was actually on June 10th, and she decided to share uh, the, the, the month with me. My birthday is May 10th, and her, now her birthday is May 19th. So um, it was a blessing. It was a complete blessing. So, But thank you for having me on here, Sean. I know we've been talking. Uh, it's been on the ups and ups here for us to get on here and you know me give you guys some we'll just train you guys and i promise sean that i'll give you guys the best that i can today we'll be going over some uh some forex and also i'm gonna be providing you guys with uh sean's approval which i asked him uh via our talks on the back end uh i'll be giving you guys my binary strategy as well it's actually a template that i'm gonna be providing you guys so you guys can actually share it onto your mt4 and use it for your own benefit because that's it's essentially just what i do right uh, essentially what i do so but nonetheless my name is kevin serrano i've been trading since 2000 and uh 2012 i think it is 2012 give or take when i was introduced 2011 but i started trading fully and getting more immersed into it 2012 um and and just really taking this on and 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 growing from this but nonetheless i want everyone on here to know right now that I'm not a smart individual. I'm not the smartest individual. I'm not book smart. I'm more street smart than book smart. Uh, when when it came to school, I barely graduated high school. I was mixed with the wrong individuals. I was gang related. I actually was, um, I won't say obviously the gang, but I was gang related and we were mixed into a lot of mischievous things. At least I was mixed into a lot of mischievous things, uh, which unfortunately led me to uh, going to prison, getting arrested and going to prison. Full transparency, I actually went to prison for assault, battery and robbery. Um, and, you know, unfortunately that during that time, um, uh, unfortunately enough during that time, it allowed me to kind of revisit or rethink my life, rethink the decisions that I was making, the path that I was going down. I had two siblings, I had three siblings, well, two little sisters and one little brother. My little brother, a little more conscious of what was going on. My second second youngest, my little sister somewhat as well. And the third one was a baby. But nonetheless, you know, to be an individual that had these three siblings and 
my family, you know, giving me what they could and, and, and provided, provided an environment or structure for me. It was just my own decision that broke, you know, that broke out of that structure and led me down that path from being gang related and, you know, selling drugs or, or fighting and getting and going to prison. So I want everyone on here right now, like, I know we all have a backstory. I know we all have gone through things. I know we all have, have encountered endeavors in our, in our life. doesn't matter where you guys have come from, no matter what you guys are going through or what have you guys are going through or will you guys go through at the end of the day, like as long as you stay consistent and know that there is like at the end of the tunnel because you want to do better for yourself it's going to do it right it's always it's about that energy put that energy out there it's going to happen you know when i thought i left i thought i got out of prison um i was working these little small jobs i worked at baby gap i worked at did little security i did uh and then i worked at this this dollar store family dollar now and you know i fortunately during that time um, I was still rethinking my decision and still rethinking my life, still rethinking kind of like, what, what was I doing? What, what am I going in this path, you know, of that, you know, this journey of my life, right? And I was being defined as a cashier because that's what I was at that dollar store. I was a cashier and, you know, they were paying me $7.77 an hour during that time. And, and for those of you who may not know, but New York is stupid. It's, it's, it's stupid, expensive, it's high end, it, it's up and running. And obviously $7.77 an hour is not a, it's not a lot, right? It's not a lot. So um I, I was fortunately enough uh, introduced to Spila. I'm not sure if anyone knows who Spila is, but she runs with corporate and she um became one of my best friends, one of my mentors. I was like, listen, Spila, I want to know what this is. I want to be in, I want to be in this game. You know, I saw Forex as a possibility to to blow myself up out of out of the 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 little, you know, the 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 negativity of the, of the environment that I was I was surrounded by, right? I was still, you know, being messaged by these individuals that I was doing these mischievous acts with. And I was like, this is not what I want to be. I don't want to be defined as a cashier. So um, I was I was head on. I was like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I want. And ever since then, or during that time, even to this day, like I wake up every day with my back against the wall, knowing that this is what I want. This is the path I want to be on. This is the, the my this is the journey that I want to stay within. You know, this is the lifestyle that I want to live, right? Financially free without a, you know a boss. This is what I want. So during that time, I was like, God, it's like yo, you know, uh, I, I was hiding out in the stock room. I was I was still within the aisles. They had me stocking M and M's and Pringles on the walls and milk, whatever it is. And I was like, this I don't. Don't want to do this right so i would hide out on my phone watching spila teach and or hop on her london sessions because she was i work overnights or you know when they're stocking stuff i'll hide out i'll put two they have, there's a thing called like these the, uh, bales where they're on carts so i'll stack two in between each other and i'll stick i'll stay i'll sit in between them and i'll look at the charts and i'll try to watch some videos and then i will always get caught i will always 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 get caught all right um and the, the, i say this all the time but uh, I, I say this for a purpose but I remember the day that they fired me when they fired me because obviously I wasn't doing my my job right <laughs> I wasn't doing my job but when they fired me um my boss and the manager he was like listen we pay you so well here we pay you seven dollars and 77 cents an hour you're not going to get better than this so at that moment in time he put that price tag on my head knowing saying that that's my worth my seven dollars and 77 cents an hour was my worth that was what I was defined by as a cashier that was worth seven dollars and 77 cents an hour and you want me to go stack some milk and Pringles and M&Ms all that stuff right that's that's who I was defined as and I didn't want that I knew I was gonna be better than that I knew that when I was going down that path of going to prison gang bang and so on and so forth that um you know uh, i knew that was the wrong path obviously because it led me down a, you know into well into prison right so um every as, as soon as i found forex i threw myself into it. I threw myself into it. I was like, I'm going to get this. I'm going to understand this sleepless nights, whether staying up to three, four, six, seven, eight, nine in the morning, no sleep and going to work the next day or, 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 you know, uh, even my days off, still immerse myself in the computers, reading books, really naked Forex or, or, or I'll get, actually I'll send you, I'll send Sean two PDFs that really, 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 really help me understand like the mindset of things. Um, understand the mindset as far as just living in general, where being patient, we staying consistent, right? I actually got this tatted. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. It's a turtle, right? I, I, it's, a, it's a turtle. I got the turtle tatted. So you, you guys know what the tortoise and the hare story is? The tortoise and the hare, right? So I see a lot of people shaking their heads. I got that because no matter no matter the the um, the ridicule that the the, the tortoise kept uh, um, receiving from the hare, no matter the ridicule the that you know because the tortoise was uh, the hare is quick, the hare is running. You know he was he was boasting all about it. The tortoise stood focused. The tortoise stood consistent. The tortoise kept going no matter you know the ridicule he received. So this here uh, reminds me every day to stay patient, to stay consistent, no matter how far, no matter how long, no matter you know what I encounter, always stay consistent, always stay on this path 
always stay uh, pushing forward or always stay focused no matter how fast someone else goes. Sean may hit seven figures or eight figures or get Forex down or HFX down, whatever the case may be, three months from now. But Becky, she may take a year. It doesn't matter, right? Everyone's running at their own pace. Everyone's running at their own pace. Everyone's running at their own you know, at, at, at what, because I, I look at things at, at the mental speed, we're all able to process things differently, right? So this comes down to kind of like, uh, like, to, like to Forex, like for me, I, I tell people on a very, 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 very uh, on transparent basis, listen, I'm not the best trader, I'm a confident trader, right? And a lot of us in here sometimes lack confidence when it comes into trading. Sometimes it lacks confidence when it comes into trading. And, you know, sometimes when I, I still hear this to this day, like I still demo to this day on a, on a very heavy basis. There's a lot of negative connotation that comes to that because you look, oh, you're demo trading. How the hell do you think we build our confidence at the beginning of our story? How do you think we build our confidence at the beginning of our, of our journey? We, we demo, right? So I tell people this, like, stay patient, right? I We come into this and we know there's a lot of, trades that we can take there's a lot of pairs that are out there there's a lot of currencies and so on and so forth whether becky likes to trade ga or mr bless like the name right decides to trade euro usd right everyone has a different uh, type of speed to how they process things right i tell people take it slow and steady choose three or four pairs that you're going to focus on and and choose and work with in like in depthly, right? Only focus on those three or four pairs. As you guys may have heard, I know Sean has heard, I only trade GBPs. I only trade GBPs. Maybe with some euros, but I only trade GBPs because I've been able to, my, my mind processes things quickly. Sometimes when I speak, I speak a little quickly. I don't know, if, I'm not sure if it's like a New York thing, but I, I, I try to process things. I process things typically quickly, typically quick. So I need, I need to find pairs. I need to find things that run in my mental speed. So a lot of you on here may not run as fast as I can. So trade and, you know, look for a slower pair, less volatile, right? Look for like NZD, USD or Euro USD. I'll give you some suggestions, right? But it's it, it, not, not overall, like even when outside of Forex, I try to take things in a calm manner because in a rush manner, things don't, 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 don't get done quick. I mean, don't get done correctly, right? Things don't get done correctly, right? I always said trading Forex has allowed me um, to build my patience and to, to um, I had enough patience to be able to have a child or enough patience to be able to, you know, have, have my, have my baby. I definitely found out that wasn't it when two weeks ago, <laughs> I definitely found out that wasn't the case two weeks ago when a baby was born. Um, I was like, oh man. This is going to be a test of my will, right? <laughs> this is going to be a test of my will. Six, seven, in, like today, she was up six, seven in the morning. I'm just like, oh, it's like, all right, honey, you, you got to, you got to, you got to give, give me, let's, let's figure something out here, okay? Um, but nonetheless, I always say patience is key. So I always say, this is a book I'm going to give you guys. It's the way of the turtle. Um, and it, it allows you to come in and I'll send you the PDF. You guys don't have to go and buy it. I'll just send it to you guys. Um, it's the way of the turtle and it's more of the essence of being patient in your way, right? Finding your way, but patiently finding your way, right? We're to, oh, sometimes we're always busy looking at social media or always looking at other people's pockets, you know, going on go live, like, oh, this home homeboy just made this much or he just smacked three, four pairs or whatever the case may be, you know, just finding your own way, staying patient, staying consistent, staying in your own lane, finding your way with patience, right? My strategy may not work for everyone. It may work for a lot of you. My HFX strategy, it may not work for many of you, but it may work for many of you. It's it, it give or take. You guys, you know, whichever way you guys gravitate towards. But finding your way is patient, right? It took me six years to find my way. I quit my job. I don't remember. It was some time ago, right? I Some time ago, but from, from the point where I was able to trade and then get to the point where I'm confident enough to leave my job, it took six years, right? It took a little bit of over six. It took like six years to get that done. A lot of people took less, right? But six years for me, because I knew that I, I needed, I, I don't look to be rich, I look to be stable. So I needed to find that consistency in my trading. And what allowed me to understand is like, if I'm looking to leave $4,000 a month for my job, I need to be able to make eight, right? If I'm looking to leave, you know, uh, if, even with overtime, I'm making $6,000 a month for my job, I need to be able to make 12, right? I need to find, I needed to find uh, stability, right? I have a family now. I had a lady then, right? So I needed to find stability in my life. I have a family back in New York that I needed to take care of as well for my, my, two, my two little sisters, my little brother. So I need to find stability. So everyone on here right now, I'm not sure if everyone has a pen and paper in front of you um, or uh, your computer, your notes, or whatever the case may be. Think, take like, 10 seconds right now. And this, this has allowed me to do this, like to always remind me to stay consistent, stay patient, like deep down, whether you get emotional, whether it's, it, whether it's heartfelt, whether it's, it's for yourself, write down your purpose of your journey, 
of why you are trading right now. Write down your purpose of your journey. What is it that reason why you're trading? My reason, and I got to be honest with you guys, was to hear my family say they're proud of me. Because when I was going to prison, when I went to prison, and my, my dad legitimately told me that he was ashamed to call me his son, right? He was ashamed to call me his son because I was unfortunately wasn't representing a good uh, uh, image of him, right? I was representing a good image of him. So my purpose on a very grand scale, and I say this openly now, like it took me some time to, uh, to say this, but um, just recently I've been able to open up and say this, but it was to hear my family say I'm proud, they're proud of me, right? Because I wasn't doing them any, I wasn't doing them any justice back in the day, even when, you know, back then when they raised me, you know, with, with, with structure, with a great environment. So, and, and the reason why that's my big purpose is I remember sitting down in my room in, in, uh, in, in Queens, New York, and, and um, my, 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 my mom had left the house to pick up my, my siblings. I'm sitting in my little, small little room, right, twin bed and very small room. And I legitimately was contemplating suicide, legitimately contemplating suicide. Like I had a knife and I was legitimately contemplating suicide. And it got to a point like I was like, you know, it was, it was it, it, unfortunately, I, I, I shamed my family because the, the path that I took. And then literally, I'm talking about the room was like quiet. You ever seen those movies where everything went slow motion? There's no sound, right? My little brother's sister bust through the front door and I heard him coming up the steps, right? Like it was one of those, I was like, oh, shoot. And now imagine what they would have seen, how they would have felt, they would have saw me if I would have went through with the actions that I was gonna, you know, gonna, I was gonna cause harm to myself. Imagine that, they would have been scarred, tough scarred to this day, right? So my reason why on a major scale, no matter what it was, no matter if I want to accomplish and make a million dollars, go buy a big house or go invest into this or take my family to that, pay my mom's house off. My main reason why, and I want everyone to make sure that they have it at the top of their page is, uh, well, mine was to make my family proud, but for you is to write down your purpose at the top, top of your screen, top of your notepad, whatever the case may be. And make sure, and this will help me because it's mental repetition, is make sure you have that every single time you sit down in front of your computer. Make sure you have that in front of you. You look at it. Make sure you have that to remind you why you're doing what you're doing. Make sure you have that in front of you when you're looking to take a trade and you want to go, oh man, I missed this trade. Oh, I missed that trade. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Or, or damn, I took one trade for the today. It's cool. Your, your purpose may be slower than others, but your reason why should drive you every single day to be patient and consistent, right? To be patient and consistent. And that's, how, that's what allowed me to do. I have my board right here with things I need to do. And then my Chairman 10 post at the top high, on the top of there, a, a consistent repetition of imagery, right? Consistent repetition of imagery. So my subconscious knows why or reminds me every, every day that I, this is my goal. This is what I want to strive for. This is what I need. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Sleepless nights, right? Every day. Right. I may wake up every day with Sean at seven in the morning, eight, seven a.m. or you know, six a.m. central, and I only, I may only take two trades. That's fine. Those two trades are gonna give me what I need for the day, and I'm gonna walk away because I know those two trades, I didn't have them the day before. Right. I didn't have those the 50 pips the day before. I didn't have those twenty dollars the day before. Let me ask you a question. Let me pull somebody out real quick. Roxanne, real quick. Roxanne, Roxanne White. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. All right. If you're walking down the street right now and you saw twenty dollars roll by you on the on the floor, are you gonna look at it and be like, "Eh, I'm gonna wait for a hundred dollar bill," or are you gonna pick nope. those twenty dollars up? I'm picking the twenty dollars up. So that's the same thing with the market. You're gonna go and get what you need when the market gives it to you, and you're gonna walk away and not wait for, "Okay, the market only gave me twenty bit. Uh, market's only give me twenty pips. I'm gonna wait for fifty. No, you're gonna go and get what you need when the market presents itself, and if it gives you twenty, you're gonna collect those twenty because that's what you didn't have prior, right? You didn't have that stuff prior. Right. So knowing that you're going to go into the market and only obtain what you need and what the market is going to give you. Right. So say I go into the charts today when I do with Sean and the market only gave me 25 pips. That's, that's our maximum TP. I'm going to go and collect that 25 pips. The point is, don't rush the process. Don't go for greed. Don't go for big. Go for what you can right now. Go for what you can when the market gives it to you. Right. Go for get when the market gives it to you. Right. So um, after you write down, your, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to help you guys form this trade plan, my personal trade plan that has allowed me to kind of formulate my, my goal, formulate what I have. Um, and even to this day, like I, I formed it back then, but nonetheless, this, I'm going to, um, um, I'll show you my screen now. Let me know if you guys are able to see the screen. You get to see the screen? Good. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. So, all right, cool. So this is basically going to, this is, this was created back in 2020 <laughs> before Corona hit. But, uh, uh, cause I, I remember doing, I did, uh, I did Mark Mastery legitimately January 1st of 2020. It was freaking cool. But nonetheless, let me zoom in. How do I zoom in here? I'll just do this. Did it zoom in with you guys as I put my fingers to the screen? 
Yeah, okay, cool. So Cecilia, we're gonna erase that name real quick. We're gonna put Roxanne again, right? Roxanne's go, right? Wherever today's date is, uh, uh, June 2nd to whatever, Becky, put your goal at the top, right? Write your name, whatever the case may be. Make your roadmap, right? You're gonna make your trade roadmap. Don't worry about year, put your trade roadmap. And everyone at the top of the screen, write their purpose, write their goal, write their reason why they're doing what they're doing on a self-accomplishment. I wanted to make my family proud. I wanted to hear them say, we are proud of you. And I was able to do so before I moved down to Texas from New York, right? I heard that. It was amazing to hear. But after I wrote that down, I wanted to write down my personal goals. I wanted to go buy a house. I wanted to go move down. I wanted to go buy this. I wanted to go accomplish this. I wanted to have a million dollars, right? These are some people's goals. Open up a business for their brother, build a family house for their, you know, for their brother, start a school project, go to eight different countries, hit chairman by 10, 2021, buy a house. Make sure at the every single day at the top of your list, you have this printed out. You have your goal written down. You have your, your reason why written down. Because again, it's a constant repetition of imagery of uh, of, of uh, into your subconscious, letting you know why you're doing what you're doing. I was in David and Manitia's house not so long ago. And he not, I'm telling you, he has like in this in the rooms that we were in, he has nothing but just like a mansion here with a lake view here, this watch right here. Like it was just um different pictures, not family, it was just just things he want that he was trying to manifest constant repetition, right? It was that in constant repetition of imagery in your mind, right? Because your subconscious sees it without you un un unknowingly thinking about it. You look by it, you see that house that you want to go acquire, you see that watch you want to go acquire, it's a constant repetition to your subconscious, the reason why you're doing what you're doing. So there's going to drive you to go and actually manifest that into real reality, right? So always have that, always have that constant repetition. When you see that, when you sit down in trading, right? Have that there in front of you, pay off my mom's house wherever the case may be, because it gives you a reminder of why you're doing what you're doing, right? It gives you a reminder of why you're doing what you're doing. I'm not sure if someone, some people in here may have a, 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 a insane, insane reason why they want, where it's super emotional, whatever the case may be, but sit back and think of yourself right now in that moment when you hear, when you accomplish that goal, when you hear that person tell you this, or you pay somebody else's this off, imagine that moment. Right, because all you're doing is gonna manifest that. I believe in energy, and energy is like a fishing line. I'm gonna throw that energy out there like a fishing line, and, and something's gonna attract itself towards it. And I'm just gonna reel that. I'm, I'm just gonna reel that vision in, slow, little by little, little by little, little by little. Right. So always have that at the top of your page. Right. So now scrolling down. Remember, this is gonna create your trade plan now, and this is gonna help you stay patient, stay consistent, and stay within your boundaries. All right. So everyone on here, don't want no answers. Don't write it in the chat. This is all personal, right? I want everyone to be realistic and and uh, and, and um, be realistic with yourself and know what's in your account. Whether it's two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, twenty grand, right? Know realistically what's in your account and know that that is your balance. That is your trade account. That is your stuff, right? Realistically, you can't trade a twenty dollar twenty dollar account and it, like 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 it's a thousand. You can't trade your twenty dollar account like you have half a million in your account. Right. You, you have to be realistic. Right. Be realistic no, with what your with what your account size is, but know you're going to accomplish your dream with your realistic amount in your account. OK. Right. Uh, what is your strategy you're using? I'm going to show you a strategy today where you're doing London payout, where you're doing Gold Cup with a scanner, with a minor Q, where you're doing DeLorean. No matter what it is, everyone's going to gravitate themselves towards something that fits them best. Right. That fits them the most. And I encourage you guys to go always look at different aspects of uh, uh, different aspects of of, uh, of of perspectives of trading because each individual has a different way of viewpoint of looking at the market. I'm gonna give you mine today, but you may gravitate toward, towards that perspective other than uh, over some, someone else's. And I encourage someone to do so because I only want to see I only want to see people win, right? And winning, uh, allow seeing you guys win is only a testament to the work that we've been putting in to give uh, and, and the knowledge we've been giving you guys, right? Now, let alone that being said, I'm not sure where everyone's located here. What sessions are you guys gonna be trading, right? Tokyo, London, New York. Dear Sean, I trade nothing just pre-New York. All I do is just pre-New York. 7 a.m. Eastern. Boom. Smack it out. Walk up, walk away. All right. 7 a.m. What is that? That's pre-New York. That's our New York session right here. Right. Now, what time during that session? Because you guys know New York opens at 8 a.m. Eastern, but I may only want to trade at 10. Right. So whatever sessions you guys are able to trade and you put down to be your uh, your, your 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 time or session to trade, what time you're going to trade? Right, what time during that session you're going to trade? I always say London, right? If you're looking to trade London, you'll find 
eight, this, it, a, enormous amounts of setups between 1.30 a.m. Eastern and 4 a.m., just that initial window right there. I know it's a little bit of a large window, but you're going to see a lot of setups pop off during that time, especially with the euros and GBPs. 1.30 a.m. Eastern to about, let's say, let's say, let's give it a little bit of space, but 1.30 a.m. Eastern to 4 a.m. Typically, you start seeing the setup around 1.30, and they start popping off like 2.30 to 4, give or take. So that window in itself is a, is an enormous window, but it's a lot of setups that pop off during that time for the duration of London, okay? Now, New York, if you're looking at New York, you'll find an enormous amount of setups at uh, the time that we get on at 6.30 to 8 a.m. You find an enormous amount of setups then. And then if you're looking to look after 8 a.m., between 9 o'clock or 9.30 all the way to about 10.30. This is a we'll look at it today. I'll show you guys how to look at it today. There's massive amounts of setups during that time. All right, you'll see them, okay? Now, uh, what time during the sessions? I told you guys, you try to choose what you guys want, all right? Now, here's the verse, very important. Again, this is all, all going to lead to a grand scale of things, right? What pairs are you guys going to trade, right? This is important. I only trade GBPs, right? I trade primarily just GBPs, hence why I have them broken down on the right-hand side over here, right? These are the main GBPs I, I trade. I'll show you guys that later. Right, have the pairs that you're going to trade. Whether it's going to be Euro USD, GBP USD, AU, right? Have have the have um at least in my opinion, for starting off two or three pairs that you are going to focus on and learn them. I'm talking about learn them in depthly. How much they move, when they move, what news affects them, right? You it, you know you have to uh you know as far as volatility and so on and so forth right you have to figure out which pairs you're gonna learn and know like the back of your hand right because why those are gonna be your go getters those are gonna be your breadwinners those are gonna be the ones that pay your bills right shout out to compliance right but those are gonna be the ones that are gonna uh, allow you to come in and immediately go to them right and make your money again past profits will guarantee future results just gotta put this out there before I get in trouble all right but nonetheless you have to uh, know what pairs you're gonna go into or pairs you're going to trade in, in, in immediately because sometimes when we get on and i'll give you guys an example of this look look at the bottom of my screen this is the binary so i'll teach you guys that later right but look you have let's say you have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve you have so much stuff at the bottom of your screen right so much stuff at the bottom of your screen now in your mind you know you can make money with every single one of those right you can make money with every single one of those pairs right? Every single one of those. What are you doing? You're stressing yourself then because G GA may look good. EA may look good. NZD USD may look good. Oh, gold may look good. Now you're stressing yourself too thin and you only have so much you can enter, right? You have so many pairs that you can enter, right? You want the most confident and probable setups that can give you, uh, give you, uh, uh, give you well, your money, right? But nonetheless, I always say choose two to three pairs that are going to focus, that you're going to focus on in depthly and trade. My mentor, he kills it on AUD USD. He said his, his breadwinner is AUD USD. He, he kills it on AUD USD. That's like one of the only pairs he gets on in trades in a time that I trade. All right. And he'll look at others if AUD and USD ain't looking right, but that's his favorite pair, right? Because he learned it. So I always say choose what pairs you're going to trade in depthly and understand in depthly, and you're going to make those your, bread, your breadwinners, right? Now, even more importantly, all right. I want everyone to be realistic with themselves, right? Legitimately be realistic with yourself, all right? I want you to know that this is, this. it's a marathon, right? And it's a marathon, it's a long, again, be the tortoise, right? Be the tortoise, right? No matter how long the journey will take, it's, you're going to get there no matter what, stay focused, okay? So how many trades a day are you going to take? I legitimately take two trades, a, two to three trades a day. I personally try to take two, three trades a day. Why do I need 10? All right, two or three trades a day, right? Each trade minimum has to be 25 pips for me, right? You guys can determine that. I go for 25 pips minimum, right? I go for 25 pips minimum personally per two, three, per those two, three trades, right? The reason why I do that, because that's all I need. That's legitimately all I need. Now, if it hits 25 pips minimum, but it shoots 60, right? Or it shoots 50, those extra 25 is just bonus. Those extra 25 is just an extra bag in my pocket. Those extra 25 is going to help pay for some, you know, Similac for the baby, right? Pay for some, you know, food for the baby. Like, it's just extra, it's extra for you. So always have a realistic, have a realistic uh, um, goal of how many trades a day are you going to look for within the window you decide to trade and the time that you decide to trade and how many pips minimum are you going to want to go for per trade? Now, also have a per day goal. 
If my goal, because I'm taking two, three trades a day, 25 pips minimum, my goal for the day, honestly, is 50 pips. Because I'm trading on the higher lot size, whatever the case of me, make whatever assumptions. My goal a day is 50 pips minimum, minimum for me, all right? Y'all can go for 100. You guys can go for 75, go for 30, whatever y'all feel comfortable with. The main key of this is, right, I need you guys to be realistic and what and go for what you are capable of doing why because that's only going to grow that's only going to uh, uh, increase that's only going to continue in large right because you're gonna go for 25 25 25 25 25 25 damn i've been realizing my set has been going for 30 damn i've realized instead of going for 50 right you're going to get better your confidence is going to grow so what's going to happen with you your account's going to grow right your 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 your, your happiness is going to grow you're going to see your numbers increasing in your account all right but be realistic. How many trades a day you're going to take? How many uh, uh, pips per trade you're going to take? And what's your daily goal? And let's go one step forward, right? One step forward. What is y'all weekly goal? Whether you're doing pip-wise or, or money-wise, what is your weekly goal? Because all you're doing to yourself is giving yourself a mental goal. All you're doing is giving yourself something to strive for. All you do is giving yourself a reason to get up and hit that target. Give yourself a weekly goal, right? Every single day right? Well, every single week, right? Every single week. Give yourself a weekly goal. Let's take it even further. And another reason why I'm doing that, because I have it right here with me, right? Because I do it. What is your monthly goal? Then follow that. What is your yearly goal, right? You're giving yourself your three-month plan, your six-month plan, your 12-month plan. Give yourself something to strive for every single day. And what I suggest y'all do, remind yourself of that goal every day, like I said, because it's going to keep you up and keep you hungry, right? Keep you up and keep you hungry, okay? Um, we did all this. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, is it keep you up and keep you hungry? Right now, what this is allowing you to do, let me all show you this. What this is allowing you to do, and this is very important, is structurizing, giving you guidelines and giving you boundaries to stay within. Right. Becky, Julia, Roxanne, Adrian, Mr. Bless, and Cheryl, y'all all different. That's that's without a doubt. Y'all different. Y'all all have different goals. Y'all have different reasons why, right? Your journeys are going to be different. Right. You may be on the same journey as far as being financial freedom, but your personal journeys on your trade, your, your trade journey, right? Your forex journey, your reasons of doing what you're doing are it's all different, right? It's completely different. Right. But what this is doing is everyone's lane is going to be their own. Everyone's lane is different. And what this is doing for you and why you're doing this is you're creating your own lane, you're creating your own boundaries, you're creating your own structure that fits you, right? You are you, you are unique in your lane, your your trade plan. Is going to be for you. It's going to be uniquely for you, right? It may resemble some of Becky's. It may resemble some of Daniel's or Colo's or Latoya's. It may resemble it, but it's structurized just for you because you created it realistically to structurize your trade plan for the next six to 10 to 12 months, right? Does that make sense to everybody? And what this allows allow you to do is to stay consistent. Oh, my goal is 50 pips a day. Let me wake up. Boom, right? And check this out. You hit your goal. I want someone to answer this to see if you guys pick this up. Once you hit your goal in your, your live account, and you want you have the itch you have the itch to continue trading where are you going to go are you going to trade in your oh i heard mr bless i heard i saw him mouth those words where where are you going to go you're going to go to your demo because i can blow ten thousand dollars in my demo account and i'm not stressing okay i'm not going to be stressing because it, it, i don't care it's demo all I'm doing is feeding the urge, feeding the greed, right? Because how many of you in here right now have fallen into the uh, fallen into the uh, puzzle piece of greed, right? You fit the puzzle piece. If it's a if there's a puzzle right here and there's a missing puzzle piece, if you fit that puzzle piece of the word greed, drop a one in the chat right now. Drop a one. I fall into it. I gotta be honest with you guys. Be transparent with you guys as possible. I got into. I fell into greed today. I'm not gonna lie. But that's besides the fact. We're not talking about me. We're talking about y'all. All right. But we, I fell into greed today. We're, we're, again, this is just gonna, we're gonna break out of it. We're all human. We all have emotions. We're all, you know, we're all susceptible to that. But this is gonna help allow you to minimize those breakouts, minimize that greed, minimize those downfalls. We're all susceptible to downfalls. That's, that, that, that's, that's an obvious statement, right? But we're limiting those downfalls, right? What we're limiting those downfalls. You know, what's a journey without downfalls? Those downfalls are only, are only gonna, those be, those be lessons, those, you know, be be little little stumbles, those scrapes, little scars that you can reflect, look back on, and be like, oh, I don't want to do that again. Let me not, let me not, let me not break out of this plan anymore, right? 
So this is allowing you to be patient. I'm gonna go for two, three days, two, three tr uh, trades a day, it's 25 pips each. Let me take quality over the quantity and wait for the perfect setup, right? And be consistent because your goal is gonna remind you every day what that reason is. My reason now has obviously has 10 times because now I have a daughter, right? So she is my reason, right? My motto in life is always to, if I'm born into, my, my motto is I'm born into a life, I'm sorry, is to be do better than the life that I was born into, I'm sorry. It's to do better than the life I was born into. My family gave me a great life. Now I'm trying to give my daughter a greater life, right? And that's what I'm here to do, right? And that's my purpose now, all right? So with that being said, I know this rambled a whole bunch of stuff. Y'all ready to get into some Forex? Yeah? Okay, let's do this. Let me share my screen. All right, let me know. And um, I'll at the end of all this, and once we get off, I will provide those two PDF uh, links to the books. And I'll also provide the uh, the the um uh, the HFX stuff afterwards, but that's that's something else. All right, I'll teach you guys that after. So with that being said, let's dive into this FX stuff, and we'll rock out and do what we do. All right. So before we dive into it, I want to make sure everyone, okay, everyone is ready, everyone is open, everyone has their, their uh, they have their undivided attention, has they have their notepads ready. You guys are good to go because once I dive into this, once I start going, once I start just running with this, right, it starts off with beginner, goes to intermediate to advanced. Drop some ones in the chat so I know I have y'all attention. I know you're not sleeping at the keyboard, all right? I know you're not sleeping at y'all phones, all right? Drop some ones so I know you guys are here, you guys are ready, you guys are ready to rock, okay? Okay, I see some ones. Hold on, I got to bring some up. I got to I gotta get the, uh, hold on. Um, there we go. I start. I started off right now. Boom. Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna play something real quick. I did this. Who's ready to go? Who's ready to rock? All right. None of that. That's enough of that stuff. Let's go. Okay. So first and foremost, what we're gonna do here right now, we're gonna teach you guys about zones. I say this very, I say this all the time, every day, all day, on my sessions, even outside my sessions, on every training that I've done. All right. What I'm gonna show you guys right now is what my mentor taught me, and it has allowed me to understand uh, or simplify a lot of what I've, uh, um, what I was doing prior. Right. It simplified a lot. I believe simplicity is key. What I do is not hard. What I do is typically easy. All right. It just regards. It just uh, flows into patience. Right, you need to have patience so you can uh, um, take trades accord uh, properly and um, you know avoid taking incorrectly placed trades. Right, and again, we're all going to be open to losses, but we're going to do is minimize those losses. Right, minimize those losses. So first thing foremost, what we're going to do here is let's go into this. Hold on, take some of this stuff out. Boom. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our charts. Let me clear this up. There we go. A clean chart, plain chart, re ready to go, right? And what we're going to do is, or what I like to do is, I like to go into my four-hour chart, okay? First and foremost, I go to the four-hour chart, all right? And I see what the market is looking like right now. Let alone, I see what the market is looking like right now. I need to find my reactive levels in the market, right? We're going to label a lot of our zones supply and demand, okay? So to give everyone a quick synopsis of what a supply and demand is, supply... Okay, supply is, um, is, is where, is resi it's like resistance, or it is resistance, it's resistance. Is resistance, I'm sorry, is resistance where sellers are located, okay? Demand, and again, I'll well, I, I'll the stuff I will provide you guys at the end with the um, like the PDFs and stuff, the books and stuff will break down. Um, it'd be a lot of mind the two two of our mindset stuff, and I'll provide um, a price action a price action PDF with a book. Um, very small one. I know some people like oh, I read Naked Forex. Some people really don't read Naked Forex. They say they did. I've you know it. it what I'm gonna give you guys is very short and simple, um, and very very beneficial. All right, demand. Think of it what it is. Right, it's Support, right? Where buyers are located. Okay. So supply is re it's resistance where sellers are located and demand it's support where, where, where buyers are located, right? A quick uh, example of that before I help you guys identify that is going to be, right? 
that right there. Let me show you. Um, that right there, right? You see, if I look across the screen, if I look across the screen here real quick and I place the horizontal line, I know that this was a straight area of buying and selling, by supply and demand. More recently, we had sales, 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 a little bit of buying, right? So supply and demand can be one in the same zone. Uh, where's my stuff, right? It could be in the same zone, I'm sorry. It could be in the same zone, right? But depends on location of the market. Supply is going to be above market, while demand is going to be where? Below market, okay? Be below market, all right? Supply and demand, what I like to call them, are PRZs, right? And I'm giving you guys this now before we get into the actual charting, PRZs. And where are PRZs? Price reversal zones, right? Price reversal, which just happened, all right? PRZ, uh, price reversal zones, right? Price reversal zones, all right? So this here, oh Lord, right? This here, supply and demand are what? Price reversal zones, right? One of the same. If I look over here, we have a PRZ of supply, but also, I mean, of demand, but also supply, price reversal zone. The market hit the zone reversed, but also broke under, hit the zone, rejected it as the, not, not as the demand, but now supply, and then what? Sold over here. What happened? Market hit the zone and found what? Supply. And what did it find? A price reversal zone. And what did it do after that? It sold over here. Same thing that happened over here. Happened over here. Same thing over here. Over here. This one broke. So now this supply is now not above market. It's where? Below. So it's now demand. So what did it find? Boom. Buyers, right? Over here, supply. So this here is a PRZ, and we work very, 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 very much with PRZs, okay? So now, this is easy. This is, you know, very easy information, all right? I'm just going to erase it now because this, uh, this is very simplistic, okay? What I'm going to help you guys do is kind of I help you identify these areas, right? Help you identify these zones. I used to, and I can show, I mean, I can show you guys how to find your support resistance zones, but I used to go into my line chart and I still technically do, but on the more advanced side, and I'll show you guys that. But what I like to do is I like to zoom out, right? I like to zoom out. When I zoom out, I can see everything, everything to the left, because everything to the left is what? Historical price action, right? All this to the left is set in stone, right? This is back in 2020, November. All this is set in stone, right? All this is historical, but what's historical could be repetitive in current day, okay? So based on where current market is at, let's say, let's take for where current market is at right now, right? And we actually may be able to get an idea for Tokyo uh, while on this session, all right? But based on where current market is at right now, okay? What I like to do is I like to go in and plot my horizontal lines, okay? Looking historically at the most repetitive reversal areas in the market. So in this case, I'm gonna plot a horizontal line here. Why? Because that is a reversal area in the market. The market has tapped that zone consistently and did what? Reverse, right? Consistently and reversed. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna label this actually, uh, PRZ. That's fine. Let me save this. Boom, right? PRZ, right? Let's find some more. We're going to plot one right here. Why? Because the market has come into this zone and what? Reverse multiple times, reverse multiple times, reversed, reverse multiple times. Okay? We're finding our areas now. Let's finding our initial bases, our foundations, right? Let's plot one down here. Right? All we're doing is looking for where current market is or was for current you know, uh, this week, let's say, right? Cause it's 28th or last week, whatever, right? But right now, and we're finding our historical primary errors in the market on the four hour chart, right? I'm an intraday trader, somewhat scalper, right? As well, but I'm finding my overall basis, right? My foundations in the market, right? Because market moves from zone to zone, okay? Market moves from zone to zone. And what we're finding here is our zone to zone markets, okay? Our zone to zone markets. All right, we're zooming out, we're plot, we're finding our historical areas, reversal areas that have happened historically, 
right? That can be used in present day, right? That can be used in present day, okay? So now we're finding our initial areas historically. We found our fund, we found our support, we found resistance, found support, found resistance, you know, all one of the same, right? What the market allows us to do, market moves from zone to zone, good wing, right? Market moves from zone to zone. So for example, now I want you guys to answer this. This down here was demand, right? This down here was demand, right there, right? We knew the market had a historical zone up here. So we knew that the, this could be TP. Boom, 170 pips. But it broke this area, right? It broke that zone. Hold on. It broke this zone. It was going to move from one zone to where? The next zone. Where did it come up to? The next zone. It broke that zone. So that for me is like, oh, this may continue going for a buy. All right, where's our next zone? Right, where's our next zone? Right, found support, resistance all the way through. And after the market broke from, from this demand, it broke the supply, broke the supply. And where did it approach? Our next supply, right? So you're finding your, 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 your relative areas, your major zones, your, 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 um, your zone to zone movement, your zone to zone market, right? And all we're doing is finding our historical areas. So let's go to a random chart. Just, just do it from one, uh, do, let's go to Euro. Good euro AD, that's fine. All right, euro AUD. Let's look historically. Let's find our reversal areas in the market. Okay. We know that historically, for the last actually for since since actually since middle of May, right? This entire area here has been a reversal area. Okay. Let's plot our next one. All right. We know this is well off the jump. This whole area here since middle of May has been a reversal area. Okay. We're finding our initial pivot points. Well, to allow you to understand and see this better too, guys, what you can do is go where? To your line chart, right? Your line chart is only going to show you the pivotal spikes of price closure, okay? So if I see these little spike zones here, my place of horizontal, I see a, a multiple spike areas here. I know this is body closure right here. This is where price is reversed. If I go to the candlestick chart, what happens? Market has identified uh, a line chart where the candlesticks have been rejecting and closing, okay? So all we're going into doing is finding our initial zones. Let's plot some more, right? Let's plot this one up here because this is where, this has been major for the last, well, all of this month and last month. Uh, let's plot this one down here. I think we may actually take a trade on this pair today. Uh, boom, right? We have a major supporter range down here, which has allowed me to identify what? Resistance, watch. Resistance, 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 support, right? All we're doing is finding our historical pivoted price areas that have uh, used a zone on a consistent basis for reversal. Let's plot that one. Go to candlestick chart, support, resistance, resistance, support, all the way through, right? And even better yet, it actually broke it and retested it over here. So you're doing is finding your ranges. That's all you're doing, right? Easy. I do this at the beginning of every week, right? For specific pairs. That's why, like, I know... Like I kind of have an idea of what pairs I want to trade for New York session, right? Historical supportive resistance areas, which was used over here on my birthday, May 10th. And what did it do? It bought a lot, right? Boom, it bought a lot. So we kept, we're finding our ranges. And what this is allowing you to do is uh, train your eyes and train your mind to be able to see these zones. Again, this is very easy. We're going to get a little more in depth, okay? This is very, very easy. So as we're finding our initial zones, finding our initial ranges, right? Right, we found our initial zones. Let's go in and see how they were utilized, okay? We found support. Uh, we found support. What's going on here? We found support. We knew that this was resistance up here. We're taking our trade from point A to point B, right? TP hit, right? It actually broke it now. We actually tested it now as not as resistance, but as what? As support, right? And we knew the market was going to go where? This next resistance, right? What did it do? Broke, came up. TP, right? Then boom, it actually broke it. When it broke it, it actually found support. So this is now not supply, it's now demand. What am I doing? Buying point A to point B, TP, right? So now we've got stagnation, stagnation, stagnation. Probably wouldn't have traded that, but then it broke up. When it broke here, right? When it broke there, right? Where are we looking for this to go? Up, right? And we already have our initial designated area where we're looking to take this TP at. Where, where would this be? Right up here, right? Because the market moves from what to what? Zone to zone. You're finding your initial ranges. And we're getting into some price action because I do price action uh, a lot.
but this is very important. This is foundation, right? You're finding your foundation. Okay. Everyone understands so far. Everybody understands so far. We drop your questions in the chat right now before we continue going forward. And again, this is Forex. This is going to allow you to go in and uh, do the strategy that I'm going to show you guys um, in, the, in a few minutes, right? My personal strategy. Everyone understanding? Drop a question in the chat if you guys have it or unmute yourself, whichever way is easier. Or if you have any questions, you guys can just unmute yourself and cut me off and I'll try to answer as, as efficiently as possible. Okay. So everyone good? I'm seeing some yeses. I'm seeing some ones. That's awesome. Let's go into it again, right? So now, very easy, very simplistic, very easy, very simplistic. Actually, as we're on here right now, what I want, um, Sean, how do you feel if I'm able to call on somebody and give them a current task at this moment? Are you okay with me calling on somebody and giving them homework? Yeah, go for it. All right, cool. Who's at their computer? Becky, are you on your computer? Oh, how about this, Sean? You can call on somebody if you want. But Becky, are you on your computer? Who's on their computer right now? I'm on my computer, but my internet's a bit dodgy. <laughs> Oh, it's cool. You can still do it. But Becky, what I want you to do, right? I'm going to go to another chart and I'm going to draw up some stuff, right? I'm going to draw some mm -hmm. stuff. Wayne said he's on the computer too. So Wayne and Becky, what I want you two to do right now is go into a random chart that I have not done. Don't cheat. Okay. And I need you to go on a four hour chart, zoom out. I need you to plot out six relative zones based on current market uh, uh, location. So if I'm looking here, Right. If current market is located right here, I have I found one zone, two zone. And you just want to find current market uh, uh, relative zones in the market. There goes my third zone. Here goes a fourth zone down here. Right. Find your relative zones. Find your areas. What we literally just did on two on the two charts. You're going to choose a completely different chart. You and Wayne and find those zones, get six of them. And what you're going to do is you're going to send over the chart uh, when you're when you're you know, when you're ready to go. OK, cool. Becky Wayne, you got that task? Give me some thumbs up. All right, cool, Leo. Let's jump. All right. So again, we're going to do another pair, guys, as they get that task done. All right. Well, actually, as they get that task done, I'm going to send you guys over some info. I sent this over earlier in the day, but I'm going to send you guys this because we're going to go into price action next. Okay. In the chat right now, guys, I dropped some notes. In the chat right now, I dropped some notes. Make sure you guys go and copy that, please. I take a sip of my water. All right. So what I just sent, what I dropped you guys in the chat is um, important information. It's, it's empty. It shouldn't be empty. I'll drop it again. Did that work? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So copy that. Okay. Copy that. Save it. That's very important because what we're going to do is we're going to get into price action because price action, even and this would be this would be an educator of the company, and you know, and it's probably someone still uh, still says it, but she she um her, her one of her models was always a student, but she always says like even with the simplistic basics uh of the basics in general for support, resistance, supply and demand, and so on and so forth, you can make money with, right? You can make money with. If you guys been on my sessions in the morning, that's what we do. We just incorporate price action. Right, very easy, and simplistic. I don't need a whole bunch of stuff on my screen to do so. Although I do use my ca my cash machine, right? I do use my cash machine and stuff, which I'll provide you guys at the end. Um, but that's completely that's that's something separate. Okay, all right. So find your zones, Wayne and Becky, and them over, let me know when you guys are ready to send them over in the chat. What we're gonna do here, guys, we're gonna go, we're gonna go into actually um, G. We're gonna go into uh, actually stay with the pair that we had. We're gonna go into E Euro AUD, and we're gonna go into price action. All right, we're gonna transition over to a four and one hour chart. Uh, and so the one and 30 minute chart and see how these zones that we've used were relative. And for example, I'm actually going to plot out on my screen. OK. My areas, uh, my time that I trade, the time that I personally trade. So these are the times that I trade. And better yet, I'll even plot out London uh, so you guys can um, see these areas in the market. You probably hear my daughter screaming in the background right now. Hold on. All right, we'll, we'll just do this for, for the moment, okay? So we have our four-hour ranges here. We have our four-hour zones. We plotted and we'll make very much, uh, break, um, my throat is dry, I'm sorry. Make a uh, note that every time frame has its own zones, right? But we're looking on the four-hour chart because the four-hour chart is giving us the overall projection of what we're going to be expecting to see on the smaller time frame. 
okay? Because how many candlesticks on the four, on one hour chart are in the four? There's four, duh, right? And how many 30 minute candles are in the one hour? Two, right? How many 15s in the 30? Two, right? How many fives in the 15? Three, right? So everything we're seeing in the smaller time frame is gonna be summed up on the four hour for the overall projected uh, projection that we're looking for on the smaller time frame, right? Or higher time frame. So now we're gonna go into our one hour chart. And see how these areas here were very much relative. But do keep in mind, I did place lines, right? I did place these lines. These lines are representations of zones, okay? Of zones. Let me erase this real quick. How do I do this? Okay. Hey, someone just sent me something. Let's look at it. Boom. I wish I could zoom in. Yes, I can. This is GBPJPY. Look, this is awesome. Found relative support and resistance, supply level, which was used actually today on GJ for what? A buy. We'll go into that. We found over here, found resistance. This is you, Becky, I'm assuming, right? Right? Uh, resistance. Boom. What happened? Support. Found our zone. It went from zone. It broke the zone, retested zone, and then what? Went up to the next zone, right? Went up to the next zone. Um, who sent this? Oh, first lady. Who's first lady? So Becky and Wayne, so, so oh, Tabitha. Okay, cool. All right. And then next one down here found uh, the Tabitha found zone, right? Support. Where did it go up to? The next zone, resistance, which she found all the way over here, right? So this is awesome. This is great. You're, you're, seeing, you're seeing your staircases, right? You're seeing your staircases there, okay? Let's go, let's go look at um, uh, Becky's. Oh, Becky, you sent an actual. I had to download it? That's fine. I just download it. I think I get that. I think that's what I do, right? Just download it. Yeah, I'll just I'll just download it. That's cool, All right? Let's go look at uh what uh, I just received. Boom. This is a four-hour chart. Look at our zones. Found resistance across the board. Boom. Right, which was used as resistance and support. Found support across the board which is used resistance, support, right? Found resistance, which is a support. Awesome. That's actually current usage from Euro GBP. We're actually going to look at this pair right now. That's actually great. You just did that, right? Boom. Found support, resistance all the way through here. This is great. You found your staircases. Found resistance, came up, broke high, came to the next zone, retested back down. Broke high, hit the next zone, retested back down. Rejected that entire area. When it sold, it came back down to where? Our next zone. Came back to this next zone, did what? Busted all the way up, right? And came where? To your next, pre to your rejection resistance. You're finding your staircases, right? You're finding your staircases. Boom, boom, boom. This is actually pretty good, okay? That's actually pretty cool. All right, now next. Now, um, Wayne, just, uh, if you're on trading, do the top right corner. Just go to the camera on the top right here. Hit, uh, Click that and then hit copy. And then you'll be able to send the chart, okay? Now we're on the one hour chart. Now, on the one-hour chart, based on what we plotted on the four-hour, do keep in mind, what is all this? These are zones. These lines are a representation of what? Of zones. All right? These lines are representations of, a representation of zone. Okay? Do keep that in mind. All right? Now, what I wanted you, want you guys to know now is what I sent you guys in the chat here is what we're going to go into. Okay? When we look at zones, the reason why we enter a trade, right, because we had valid confirmation that that zone is a rejective zone. That zone is a rejective area, okay? We have valid confirmation that that zone is a rejective area, all right? And how we validate the zone is with wicks, all right? Wicks are a main, super important part of price action or a part of trading in general because they're going to validate the area on the market that you are looking to take a trade off of, all right? Take a trade off of. So for example, Market hit this entire this four hour zone up here that we plotted, right? What did we receive on a consistent basis? We found wicks. Um, hold on, we found wick highs. Why right? we found wicks to the oh shoot, right? We found wicks to the upside, right? Wicks, wicks, wick rejection high, wick rejection high, wick rejection high, down low, wick rejection 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 low. What is this all telling you? This is all telling you that these wicks are they validate support and resistance. So if I go over here and read this, wicks are a pivotal part of price action analysis because they show us um, pot uh, us potential price reverses, reversals at the very earliest stages while also validating support resistance levels in the market. 
long wicks validate support and resistance and allow the market to define their a lot trade it to define their risk and any entries that may be taken in the market right so we long wicks reject and validate our zone so the market was coming up coming up coming up how do we know it's, it's not going to buy continuously <clears throat> these wicks wicks showed us that this here is where sellers are located remember supply is where sellers are located these wicks are a failed attempts to break that level so wicks will validate the zone wicks will validate the resistance the supply so now you're like oh shoot i see two rejection wicks oh shoot i see three rejection wicks this is giving me enabledness to continue pumping up right this is giving me enabledness to continue pumping up right so now you're looking for a what a sell Right now you're looking for the what? The sell. Wix came up, validated that this is unable to continue going up in the four hour zone that we plotted, showing me the rejection in that area, letting me know that this is unable to accept price high. So we're looking to do what? Potential sell, right? This came down to the demand zone that we plotted on four hour chart and gave you what? Wix. They validate the zone that the market is currently rejecting and is currently in for the what? Reversal or for the trade and in, in just in general, right? Just in general, okay? So this is important because we're going to go into something more advanced, my personal strategy, right, that re revolves around solely and very, very much importantly, the price action of Wix and the zone, okay? So finding your initial zone is helping you train your eyes and be able to see these areas in the market. But Wix is also going to allow you to see these areas, but also validate these areas, letting you know the trade is going to pop off in this zone. All right. Does that make sense to everybody that, that everything I just said? Hold on. Let me move this. All right. Does that make sense to everybody I just said? Right. So it, these notes right here. Okay. So the next thing I didn't read was it should be noted when analyzing price action, that the market will usually make a second attempt to breach a price level before it gives up, right? Thus, if someone's going to reverse a pair, using the tail end of a wick is offers a trade of good risk slash reward opportunities, all right? So, let me check the chat real quick. <clears throat> um, that type of the, I like using candlesticks. Um, I like candlesticks based on time, while Hakanashi candles are based on momentum. So like I can go with the Hakanashi candles right here and still apply what I what the, the same thing, right? I like using Hakanashi candles for, for binary, uh, which we'll go into. I like using Hakanashi candles for binary, um, it, it, primarily binary. I like using Hakanashi candles, but everything we're going into as far as um, the zones and price action, you can do them on ha Hakanashi candles as well, right? You can do them Hakanashi candles as well. That isn't it, it, it's as long as we're still seeing the valid confirmation within the zones that we plotted correctly, right? You can still do them in Hakanashi's. Um, so yeah, remember Hakanashi the, the pick momentum, right? If I go over, if I go to the look over here and I go to the Hakanashi candle, right? They're depicting momentum, right? So for me, it's kind of like I like looking at the candlestick charts, um, because I, I just was built in that manner. I was just built to look at Hak uh, candlesticks over Hakanashi's. Um, but when, when we go into the binary side, I will show you guys how to look at the Hakanashis in the binary. Um, but correct, this is what I'm looking for. Right? So now we're finding our zones. You guys are able to find your zones, understand finding your zones, right? Find price action. So I'm going to give you guys my main three or four confirmational price actions that I like, right? Um, my personal price action. Uh, confirmations. All right. Number one, I look for vectors, right? My ultimate favorite vectors, vectors, three or more. And this reverse to, uh, by, uh, to Hakanashi candles too. This is, I like to like vectors are, I love vectors are uh, on, um, on Hakanashi's, but three or more long wick, well, uh, three more can, uh, three more wick rejection candles. on a zone, right, insinuate exhaustion for a reversal. Am I spell anything wrong? I don't care. It's fine, right? You guys get the picture, 
Vectors three or more uh three more wicks rejecting a candle uh three more wicks rejecting um rejection candles on a zone insinuating exhaustion for reversal. A pure example of what this is before I give you the other three is gonna be this. Let me zoom in. Here's a pure example. Three or more long wick rejection candles, right? In a zone rejecting where to the high side right, where the supply is at, letting me know that this momentum is going to exhaust and do what? Reverse. Okay? Then do what? Reverse. Okay? This vector in zone rejecting to the high side is letting me know that this momentum is going to exhaust and reverse. Okay? Keep going over here. Look at this. This is a massive vector on zone in the supply, in the demand range. I'm sorry. What's it doing you? Boom. Ex uh, insinuating exhaustion for what? Reversal. Right? They are everywhere. Okay? All over the place. Right? You just got to be able to see them, be present when they happen, and take the trade appropriately. Right? Vector. This wasn't in technically a four-hour zone that we plotted. But it was in a one hour zone, right? And what we're going to go into is going to be a lot more in depth on the one hour chart. Um, but the four hours is going to be the overall projection of what we're taking a trade for, right? So the EG with that, uh, I think Tabitha did, or uh, I think Tabitha did, um, or Becky, one, somebody, one, one, one of you three, um, did one of the EGs and I liked it. I'm going to go to that one next. And I think Wayne, I'm not sure if Wayne, if you sent yours, or if you did, I'm not too sure. Um, all right, awesome, right? So that's one of my main, my personal favorites, right? My favorite, right? Number two, dojis. Everybody should know what a doji looks like. Everybody should know what a doji is, all right? If you, for those of you who do know what a doji is, I'm curious, drop what a doji is in the chat right now for those who do not know. Drop what it is. Let's see if you guys got that definition on point. All right, you guys know what it is actually, really. Okay. Let's, let's see. All right, and my third confirmation, I'll, I'll go into a little while. Indecision. That's good type of thing. I like it. What does a doji look like? A cross. Correct. It looks straight up like a... Uh, I can't, well, I can't do it on here, but a plus sign, right? Small candle with long wicks on both ends. Correct. That's awesome, right? That's awesome, right? It looks like a plus sign. Let's zoom in here and find our plus sign. We just found a vector just recently, right? Can y'all define, can y'all tell me right here, is this a vector and a doji together? Drop a one if yes, drop a two if no. Boom. Dojis. A lot of times you are going to see dojis within vectors. That's only going to increase my confidence to know that I'm about to go collect a bag, right? I'm about to go collect a bag. This is what a doji looks like, right? Sometimes you get a little miniature body, um, a little miniature body to say something, some sorts like that, right? But nonetheless, nice little perfect example of a doji right there. And they happen at a, 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 all over the place, really, like a little spinning top right there, but they happen a lot, right? If we go back to the one hour chart, mind you, that was a four hour doji, right? Let's go to a one hour doji within the zones, one of the zones that we plotted, right? Uh, one of the things we plotted, I'm sorry, right? We kind of have one here. We have another one right there, right? And we kind of have, well, there's one right up here, boom, right? All within vectors, not saying it's always gonna be within a vector, but a lot of times you'll see dojis form within vectors, okay? So that's that's one of my that's the third second I'm sorry and then the third one is going to be um, engulfing candles right um, is my uh, the shadow candle because because this is a specific one that I like to look at all right shadow candles okay it's like a shadow candles or you can do engulfing doesn't matter it's fine so uh, where's the equal sign 
All right, an engulfing candle. To give you a pure example of what an engulfing candle looks like is going to be boom, right? Typically, the first candle within the engulfing pattern, right, or engulfing candle, right, is going to be um, an opposite of what the engulfing candle is. So, for example, this tests it down on where? A supported range, right? A support range, right? Or the four-hour support that we plotted, correct? And then immediately right after, what did you receive? You got a, a, a shadow candle or engulfing candle to the high side, right? A candle that com uh, that completely engulfs and and it swallows up the previous candle, right? This is a pure example of a engulfing pattern and engulfing candle. I like to look at this and call this a kind of a shadow candle, right? Kind of kind of um, shadows over the um, the previous the previous zones, right? The previous area here, right? So that's uh, the engulfing candle, right? So this is kind of my price action uh, confirmation. Now the next ones are going to be double tops. Now structure, structure confirmation. Double tops, double bottoms, and leave it as that. Boom. So these are be my main confirmations that I look for. Okay, Wayne, you sent me over EG. Sure enough, I'll look at it right now. All right, so let's go look at let's go look at Wayne's EG right quick. I don't know where it's at. Let me see. Um, where it goes? Here goes Wayne's EG. Let's zoom in. Oh, I see you got the parabolic stars up on there, dog. Okay, I like to use those too. All right, so you, quite a bit. So we have here resistance, resistance, resistance. This is good. Resistance, found support, resistance, support and resistance, support all the way through. That's perfect, right? We found what? Res uh, support, support, a little bit of resistance, support, resistance, which was used in current. This is daily time frame too. You went up a bit. You say, you know what? Forget your four hour. I'm going to the daily, all right? You got found support, a little bit of resistance and support. This is this is perfect. This is really good, Wayne, right? He found his, he found his initial ranges, okay? His foundation, okay? So... Uh, double tops, double bottoms. Everyone should know what it is. Double top looks like a, an M, okay? And a double bottom looks like a what? A W. That's not what I wanted to do, but a W, right? Um, let me erase this, right? A W straight up looks like this. Boom, 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 boom. And then you have a double top, which looks like what? Boom, 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 okay? Perfect. Nice to see, right? Reasons why I like double bottoms, because they, they're, they're a structural confirmation, like what we have here. What do we have here on support? What do we have here on support? Market hit, boom, 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 right? Then it went up, all right? So this is structure confirmation that I like to look at, all right? And we're gonna use those now. Uh, is everyone in good understanding before we, uh, so we can proceed to a little more advanced? Drop a one if you guys are ready to go jump into a little more advanced stuff. The actual strategy in itself that kind of put, combines and collides with everything from the price action that we just did which we'll go into a little more in depthly the zones that we just drew up. All right. Um, that we had you guys do a little bit of homework on. Okay. You guys good. All right. Sweet. So what we're actually going to do right now, I'm going to erase everything on the screen. We're actually going to go and do this stuff and look at the strategy in itself. So what we just, I just showed you, it's important. The reason why I showed, why I showed you is important because this is going to allow you to find setups right? Allow you to find setups and understand the direction that your setup could potentially go in based on the zones of you that you find, okay? So we're going to work with GBP, JPY today on a trade that we took yesterday, which smacked all TPs, okay? So what we're going to do is here, we're on the four-hour chart, all right? We're going to find our initial zones. We know if the market is sitting, <clears throat> they say the market is here. Actually, let me, uh, let me do this actually. Let me replay this so you guys can do that, right? We know the market, and again, this is, we know the market is sitting here. We are, our, our time window has not approached yet, all right? Has not approached yet, right? We know that we have a zone here. Let me actually speed this up. There it goes 1 a.m. There it goes 5 a.m. There we go, right? And we're about to get into the charts. Oh, no, go back. Like that, okay? So we know the market, we're sitting here on the one hour chart, right? Here is a 3 a.m., 4 a.m., here's 5 a.m., 6 a.m., right? Now this is the time we're getting onto the market right now when I get on go live. 
So now when I'm getting on go live, what am I doing? I'm going to the four hour chart, I'm finding my zone. Here goes my support, right? Here goes my range at the bottom side. There goes my supporter range, knowing the market can come down here and do what? Retest, because this is resistance and this is support, right? Now, if it were to go for a buy, where can it go to? There's resistance up here, hence why the market rejected and fell back down. But if I want to scroll a little further to the left, I can. In this case, GBPJPY has been the highest it's ever been since a while, right? Um, since way back over here in 2018. So I know the market, let um, me go back over here. Hold on. My, I know that this is resistance up here because I know the market sold from up there, right? I want to scroll back to the left and see if that's relative, right? Look, I went back all the way to 2018 and I found that this was resistance all over here that we sold from this past the other day, right? So now I'm going to go over here and now I see that this is a resistance here and this is support. So I know if the market on the one hour chart, which I'm looking to take my trade on, right? If the market were to go for a buy, it's going to go where? Go for a the buy to that zone, or if it were to go for the sell, it's going to come down where? Sell down to that zone. So I know I know the two foundations. I found my foundation of resistance, and I found my foundation of support, okay? I found my foundation of support, okay? So now what I like to do is taking the 6 a.m. candle, 6 a.m. Eastern, by the way, right? Let me speed this up. Uh, let me go to the 30-minute chart real quick. Oh, 15, uh, 6, there you go, to 7 a.m. Boom, 7 a.m., now go back to the one hour chart, boom, right? Now go into the uh, 6 a.m. candle. I go into the one hour chart and I find my support and resistances within the one hour chart while my four hour ranges are my targeted areas in the market, okay? So I found my four hour rate, uh, so foundations as we did before. We're going to the one hour chart now. Now we find our support and resistances on the one hour chart that the market can use on the one to give me the directional trade to the four hour zone that we plotted. Okay. That's important. We're finding the support resistance on the one because we're going to take a trade in the direction that the market confirms itself is going to go to in the direction of our four hour support and resistance. So, for example, if the market rejected this support, I'm going to buy it and go where? To our, to our four hour of resistance supply. This is where the next foundation was at. If the market was to sell, I know the market is going to come down where? to our next support, found, uh, uh, support right here, which was this foundation. So you kind of have your targeted areas where the market can go to on the overall uh, uh, on the overall long haul of the move, right? So going into this here, I grab my horizontal line and I place it at the body closure of the previous candle of 7 a.m. So if I'm trading 7 a.m., I'm Placing my uh, my my horizontal line at the 6 a.m. candle close, which would be right here, right? Here's our 6 a.m. candle close right there, all right? 6 a.m. candle close right there. That's where price closed at, right? Still keeping in mind of this wick, but we're putting our horizontal line at the body closure of the 6 a.m. candle, okay? Now we're going to zoom. Now we're going to look for our resistance above and our support below, okay? So in this case, what you can do is go to the line chart and do what we did previously. Here goes a resistance area here because the price pivoted at that level, right? Because looking for price closure, right? That support. You see, if I go to the candlestick chart, price closed at that level, right? You're, fi you're finding your resistance based on body and price closure. Here goes resistance level number one. Here goes another level right up here, okay? So we're actually gonna number these. Now you're gonna find your support. It's too far to find support to the left, right? That's 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 far in itself. Let's go down to the 30 minute chart. What are we having here in the 30? Oh, they actually created it already. Uh, sped up the process. It's fine, All right? We're going to a 30 minute chart now. We kind of find our range, our next supported range down here. Mm, too far to see. Going to the 15. Kind of have our wick ranges down here, right? We kind of have our body close out. Oh, hold on. I kind of have a body closure right down here, okay? So now what we have, we kind of have our ranges in the market, our support and resistance ranges off the one-hour chart and the 30-minute chart, right? But our directional targeted areas off the four-hour. So now what we do is, we're gonna, I'm actually going to number these for y'all. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, right, make this number one, make this number two, make this number three, Right, just kept have label each one real quick. 
right? And make this one what? Number four. What's happening here? All right, make that one number four. Boom. So now you have this initial zone here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up my little window here and, and show you that we're in our trade window. Boom, we're in that little trade window now. So now what we're doing is after we found our four-hour uh, foundation, we found our one-hour support resistances, right? Because that's going to be our reactive levels, our PRZs, right? We're going to trade off of the 30, the 15, and the 5. So in this case, I'm going to transition now to the 30-minute chart now. What I'm going to be looking for is price action at one of these levels, right? Rejection and price action at one of these levels. <clears throat> Either a vector here, a double wick rejection here, a doji here, uh, engulfing candle here, right? Something in such manner that's showing me that one of these support resistance levels is going to give me my trade setup that's going to go either to my foundational support or demand or foundational uh, um, uh, supply resistance, okay? So we're going to transition over here and look over there, right? And this is, we're replaying the market, by the way. So right now in a 30-minute chart, what do we have, right? The market testing, rejecting uh, our number two level. Rejecting our seven o'clock candle, rejecting our number two level. It's going to 15. What are we doing? Mm, still a little too close for comfort. You know, I don't want to see I'm seeing anything just yet. Let's speed it up, right? Oh, it's going 15 and 30. What are we seeing? Continuous rejection, right? We'll keep going to 15. Oh, it came up to number one. It's at number one. All right, it's at our number one level. It needs to reject this number one level. If it rejects this number one level, then we're looking for a what? potential sell. But if it breaks this number one level, right, what are we looking for it to do? Go to our high a high uh, supply level, right? And go up to this high supply level, okay? But we haven't gotten that yet. It hasn't broken it. We need to see continuous rejection. It's only seven, it's only 730, still a little early. Let's fast, let's go up, uh, let's fast forward again. Oh, what did we receive? It rejected that's quite nice to see, right? It rejected. Let's fast forward a little bit, right? So now it rejected number one. Again, we're fast forwarding this. Unfortunately, the candle won't play out like we, oh, can it play out? Hold on. Oh, no, it does not play out. Okay, right? It unfortunately doesn't play out as, as, as we're watching on a, normal, on a normal market. It is what it is. But it rejected it high. So remember, we're trading off the 30, the 15, and five. So we're seeing this play out. It's going to the five-minute chart now right? What kind of structure are we seeing on the five-minute chart? And you guys can uh, tell me this. We're seeing somewhat of a double top, right? Somewhat of a double top, okay? In that zone there, somewhat of a double top in that zone there, right? Double top in that range right here, right? It's staying under our one level, right? It broke under our two level, our three level, right? Rejected back up on our two level, right? We're finding our initial foundational rejections here, right? Then what it do? It broke back under our two level, I mean, our three level, right? After it rejected our three level, right? Now it's sitting on the four. Let's say we missed all of this. Let's say we missed every single one of these rejections here. For us to consider getting into the cell, it needs to do what? Break underneath our four and give us a wick entry for a cell. Let's see if we get that. Oh, is it breaking number four? Boom, broke number four. We may have received the confirmation of a wick retest, right? We're getting what? Staircases. As I showed you guys on the four-hour chart, we're getting our staircases, right? Up and down, up and down. So what are we getting here? We broke, we rejected number one, broke number two, came down to three, rejected number three, broke number four, potentially going to retest number four. Let's see if we keep going. Right, let's see if we keep going. Where's it coming down to, y'all? Where's it coming down to? And mind you, we took that on the five minute. We're looking at that on the five minute. Based on what I showed you guys earlier, what confirmation did it give you guys here? Indecision. On the three level. Indecision, but also what pattern? What's the V word? Vector. Boom, a vector. Let alone it give you a vector here. They give you one at, on the one and two level? 
It did. So you had two confirmational entries, let alone the five minute break and retests, right? The five minute break and retest, right? We took this one, I think on a 30 minute chart. I don't recall. We'll look at uh, uh, the, the other pair today, uh, some other pair, right? So what we did, again, we found our foundation, one and two, one and two, right? Clear as day, transition to the one hour chart, found our support and resistance, right? Based on the vicinity of where we're trading. Again, I'm trading the one, uh, the one, the 6 a.m. Uh, candle close, which will be here, right? Found our support and resistance areas in close proximity to where market is at based on body closure, right? Based on price closure, right? As you've seen here. And we traded it off the 30, the 15, uh, and the five. So we got double confirmation on the 30 on the two level, another confirmation down here on the three level, break and retest on the five, on the five time, uh, five time frame, the five minute time frame, I'm sorry. Okay. And continuous rejection. Even if you missed the 30, the 30 minute time frame rejection and traded it on the 15 or even better yet, the five minute, right? Better yet, the five minute, right? It never broke any of our levels. It continuously started, re continuously rejected our uh, support resistance levels. And let's see if it ever comes down to our foundation. You're damn skippy, it did. Right down to our foundation, right down to our four hour foundation. And what did it do after it hit our four hour foundation? It bought. And when it hit our foundation, I want you guys to tell me something real quick. What did it give you? Double, a double bottom. bottom. A double bottom, right? Again, it may be a little, it may be, uh, um, it may sound too uh, strenuous or difficult to understand this now, all right? I said this now, because it, it may be something new, but this is not hard. It's very easy, right? It's very easy. Trading does not have to be hard. The reason why it's something, maybe sometimes it's, uh, or some of you may be hard for y'all because you're making it hard for yourself, right? Simplicity is key, right? I, I used to trade with uh, a, a ton of different stuff on my screen. When I removed it all, I went naked, right? And only added the stuff that I needed, right? Only added the stuff that I needed, right? It, uh, uh, it simplified a lot. Now, what I'm gonna give you guys here is actually gonna give you, is gonna be these moving averages. These moving areas are going to help you simplify a lot in, intent, uh, in sense of direction, okay? In a sense of direction. So what these moving averages are, they're two EMAs. Don't worry about this here, but they're two EMAs, all right? The first EMA is going to be a 10, and the second EMA is going to be a 140, okay? The reason why I put that indicator on here is because um, on the paid version, the pro, you're only allowed five indicators. And I think on the free version, you're only allowed three indicators, so I threw one indicator on there that allowed me to have two indicators, um, two indicators on the screen. So I don't have to take up the space. So it's called, um, I could probably send you guys this link, but it's this EMA, you could type in multiple EMAs and any indicator on there will help you. So EMA first is 10 and EMA second is 140. So now the basis behind this, right? Still incorporating everything you literally just learned from the four hour foundations, finding your one hour support resistance from the price action confirmation within the windows that I trade, right? This EMAs help me. The reason why they help me is when our 10, right? Bus is under our 140. You can do 150 as well, right? You can do 150 as well. They both work. Um, I like both of them. Not 150, um, uh, 130. Between 140 and 130, you can do either one, right? Do either one. Right. But when the 10 breaks under our, our 130 or 140 or either range you choose. Right. And the market continuously rejects our 10. You get a golden cross. You get a golden cross. This golden cross right here. And I'm currently working on an automation, which I'll uh, be releasing to everyone for free uh, once all this is done. But um when it's programmed, but nonetheless, you get a golden cross. This golden cross allows you to know that once you get the golden cross and get price action on the golden cross, which we did within our zones, right? If I if I uh, go back and I show you, um, see, it allows me to go back all the way. It does, right? And let me go back all the way. Look what it did. We got a golden cross 
right there. We do 130, 140, does it matter? Right, we got a golden cross right in our vicinity. Rejection in our zone, rejected the two level, gave you the vector on the golden cross and gave you the entry, boom, 60 pips, right? So you're using a lot of, of this moving average to help to depict the trend, right? But also depict an entry when these moving averages cross, right? So for example, down here, you got a golden cross right over here, right? But just because it crosses doesn't mean you're entering it. You have to go in and actually uh, put in the, 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 the legwork to confirm the cross. So in this case, it confirmed it. Why did it confirm it? Because it broke a resistance and retested its support on the golden cross. And what did you get? 100, 190 pip move by. So again, this here, the reason why I didn't give you guys at the beginning, because you still have to put the legwork in, in as far as charting, price action, uh, supply and demand, right? Understanding where the market is and where it's coming from and so on and so forth, or where it was at and all that good noise, right? So this here allows you to help depict the trend and the golden cross helps you depict the potential entry for a trade, okay? Um, any questions so far based on anything I just went over, right? Is everyone understanding? Because I don't want anyone to leave here with um the emas so the emas are going to be a 10 and 140 or 10 and 130 between any any parameters for the one between 130 and 140 um does that makes sense to everybody so any questions so far and anything what we i just went over regarding you, so could you repeat total golden crosses form yeah yeah so the, how the golden cross will work would you still essentially put the legwork in right so if i go to and ghf on a four-hour chart, let's find our initial uh, ranges here. We have a zone there. This one's been trippity trapped, actually. This one's been trapped. Let's, let's, let's do that right now, right? We found our initial zones. Let's say I'm trading. I'm looking for my golden crosses. My golden crosses reflect back. Uh, mean I take only I take I only take golden crosses on the thirty-minute chart. I look for anything else, right? There's supporter. There's a one-hour support zone right here, um, and another one right up here, right? So red and green EMA setup 42. No, no, no. So the EMA setup disregard the disregard the 42, only 10 and 130. The Keltner stuff is completely different. The Keltner is um, a Keltner channel, which is a completely different strategy, um, which I use for binary. Um, so don't worry about the Keltner. Don't worry about the 42. It's only EMA 10 and 130. So if you go over here to help you guys do that, do uh, multiple. Let me see, uh, multiple, um, let me see, multiple moving averages, right? I think one of these, you can do multiple moving averages, oh, yeah, multiple EMAs, right? If you throw that on there, I don't have it, right? So if you throw multiple moving averages on there, it allows you to have multiple moving averages. Just take off the ones you don't need and only leave the two that you need. So the one EMA is going to be 10, the other one's going to be 140. So how the golden cross would essentially work is the mar the market would uh, the green line runs with the market, right? It runs with the market as you see here, right? It helps you depict somewhat of a trend, right? When the green is underneath the red, we're seeing a downtrend. When the market breaks, when the green breaks above the green, the, the red, uh, the green breaks above the red, we're seeing an uptrend, right? The golden cross is when these two intercept, right? When these two here intercept, okay? These two here intercept and they cross. Typically when you get a cross, it's within a zone, and you get a retest and confirmation of price action and, and the continuation. So if you see over here, what do we had? We had that, that, that resistance support zone that was there, right? It broke it. We got the, the golden cross on the 30 minute chart, right? But the golden cross on the 30 minute chart. After it broke that resistance, what did it do? It retested that zone, right? It retested that zone and then did what? For, for support now and did what? Shut up for a buy. Right. So you're using the golden cross to kind of help you depict the trend. So if I go over to GBP JPY, as you just saw, right, what did it do? It held reject res, uh, resistance when it crossed. There goes your golden cross for a what? A sell. And the only reason why we didn't take a trade today on GBP JPY, I didn't like it. Um, the market was kind of stagnant, although we low key could have taken one. Um, for like we, we could have taken one. I saw it afterwards and I was like, Mm, but what is what it is um but the so golden cross is what say it again so i noticed the golden cross towards the um 12 o'clock i think it is today i think it is um 
yeah, twelve o'clock today. Yeah. So and there's what time a, on GJ? Yeah, yeah, right there. So around where is it? Uh, there it is. Yeah. So there's a couple. Yeah. So around yeah, around twelve o'clock. Well, it's crossed the whole the whole time there. It's crossed here, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, right there. So that's got quite a few candles there. Yes. That is crossed across. Um, is there anything there towards the end of that? As far as like what the uh, consolid oh, over here right now? Yeah, right there. Over here right now. The only reason why I wouldn't look at this, the only reason why I wouldn't look at crosses like that, because when you start seeing the, this market is consolidating, right? There hasn't been not there hasn't been anything here. There hasn't been anything. It's been kind of just there. Hence why I didn't really tra trade it today, right? I didn't want to trade it today. Although we again we cut off on a scalp, but I didn't trade it today because the market has just been stagnating, right? It's just yeah, been stagnant yeah. there. When the market starts to consolidate in such manner, when you start seeing this consolidation in such manner right here, right? I don't look, I don't like to look at the trade, right? I don't, I don't look at the, I don't look at this crosses, right? This here is clean, right? That here is clean and down here is clean. Why? Because we're not, we're getting, we're not getting, um, and there's such thing as candlestick highs or candlestick lows. You, you see here when the market broke, we started seeing can we started getting, we're getting candlestick lows, right? We're getting candlestick lows, right? Instead of here's, here's your high, here goes your candlestick low, low. This one was just straight equal, equivalent, equal. It crossed here, right? But everything was what angling candlestick lows, going back down, right? So in this case, everything's cons everything's consolidating, right? So basically, candlestick highs and lows is basically the candles closing, right? The uh, candles are closing, right? Above one another, above one another, candlestick highs. We're getting candlestick highs. This is telling me the momentum is bullish, right? Momentum is bullish. Momentum is bullish. Momentum is bullish, right? If you look over here, we got the cross, but we got higher highs. We got a low. We got lower highs, right? Market crossed, came up, closed high, retested, closed higher than our previous low, and then did what? Shot all the way up. This one, everything was kind of equ uh, equivalent to each other when the crosses happened. The cross happened here, right? So this is just straight consolidation. If I don't start, if I don't see like stuff like this, right? Candlestick highs, right? Or better yet, on the flip side, right? On the flip side, oh, I can't do it, right? On the flip side, you see candlestick lows, right? I'm not taking the trade. That means that direction is not, it's just stagnant. Why I didn't take a trade today? Because look at it, market was just sideways, right? Market kind of, here's the time we were on, we were on right here. So the market was just sideways, really, right? Off the smaller time frame, we could have taken a buy today. Um, from like right here for like 20 pips, but I didn't see it. Like I didn't take it. And that's important, right? What you just put up on the screen is when your 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 mind, your subconscious will tell you when you're not confident in this in a specific trade. And I say it all the time on session. You know what? I'm not feeling this right now. This one may be a loss. You know what? I'm not I'm not confident in this right now. Yeah. I'll say it. If you're not confident in what you're seeing, like for example, um the EG pair, because I know someone broke EG in the other pair, the other. EG low key may look like a trade right now. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll chop this up in a second. Oh, it's 515. Oh, no. We're going to have to wait to. It's 515 Eastern. Mark closed at five. So we're going to have to wait to maybe around seven, eight o'clock tonight. Oh, oh, we're on Tokyo tonight, too. We could probably take trades on Tokyo tonight. Um, but if you're not if you're not confident in a trade, for example, like today, we could have taken a. Um, we could have, say you're taking this, this idea here, right? Taking this idea here, looking for a sell. Right, you're looking for a sell up in this vicinity, right? The reason why you will get confidence is because you have continuous rejection in this area. You found rejection, right? The market hit that zone. Also, you're getting wick confirmations. So what these wicks are doing is giving you confidence, letting you know the idea that you have in your mind is going to be validated by the market itself, telling you that this is going to sell. If I go over to GJ, GJ on the one hour chart, if you look at it, we were on at this time. It's kind of just in this range, right? Look at this. Look at this range here. When we were on this morning, look at the range that it was in, right? Here goes our high supply. Here goes our one hour resistance. And here goes our one hour support. And the reason why we found support here is because look at these wicks, validated. So this here, my mind was telling me I'm not confident in GJ. So when you when when you when the market tells you that, when the mark, when your mind, I'm sorry, when the when your mind tells you that you what you're looking at, you're not confident in, don't take it. Don't take it, right? Because what's going to happen is whether you're right or not, right? If you're right, telling you that you you shouldn't be taking this, right? 
and then you walk away and it actually goes against what you were originally looking at, it's only going to make you feel better and be like, oh, thank God I didn't get into it, right? Thank the universe I didn't get into this. But now say if you were wrong and went in your favor, it's only going to make you feel better too because you saw the setup, although you didn't take it, you saw it, right? You see the positive uh, on both ends there. So whenever your mind doesn't see, whenever your subconscious tells you you're not, it's not confident in what it sees, don't ever take the trade. Take it in demo. Okay, it's only going to help you build confidence. It's actually going to make you feel worse if you take the loss because now you're going to be like, damn, I told myself I wasn't going to take this trade, but I took it anyway and I lost, yeah. right? Yeah. So you want to be able to come in and kind of find you know, where your confidence level fit, uh, fits in. Like today, we took a Eurocat trade today, right? We took a Eurocat trade today. Hit, ended up hitting TP and all that good noise. Let me erase all this. Right. And I'm hitting TP and all that good noise right to the high side because I saw the confidence built down here. 30 minute chart. What do we receive? It's in a major demand. We found the we found the foundation this morning. Right. Support, 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 support. Going to 30 minute chart, 15 minute chart. We're getting the, the wicks to the downside. We're getting congestion. We're getting rejection down. So we said, screw it. We're entering it. We entered it at this thing, this middle candle here. Right. We entered it. Boom. Pulled back at like six pips. But then it shoots up nearly 20. Right. And we went again. It only shut up 20, nearly 20, hit TP1 and nearly TP2, but the market gave us that, right? Again, I wish to shut out the TP3, but it only gave us TP, TP1 and TP2. So I'm going to go and get it. This goes back to when I told uh, uh, that, I forgot who I called on, but if the market is only going to give you 20, 20 bucks, you're going to take those 20 bucks, right? If the market's only give you 10 bucks, you're only going to take 20, 10 bucks. Now, if the market says, I'm going to bless you, you are looking for 50, but I'm going to give you 100, then take it. Right. So that kind of goes into what it is. So I only collected maybe 18, 19 pips. Right. But I didn't have those 18, 19 pips before. Right. So here's a technique that I hope that will allow you guys to maximize your profit. Right. So, for example, um, here. Your TP is set at TP2 and we're going to HFX after this. All right. We'll go to T your, your TP is set at TP2. Right. But you're like, mm, what if it doesn't break TP1? You're going to right click on the area that you want to have TP1. First and foremost, you're going to put a horizontal line on the area. You're going to right click on the zone, add alert. Once per bar close is allow you to understand like once you alert will only trigger every time the condition is met at the bar, at the candlestick closure of that zone. Right. So now when I get notified, I'll come back in and be like, oh man, it's not rejecting. It's, it's not, it's not breaking TP1. Let me go and close it. Right. So you're maximizing your, your you allowing yourself to maximize profit. Why? Because let's say your TP was set at TP3. You have alert set at TP1 and TP2. What's it going to do? TP1 got hit. Oh, okay, it's still going. TP2 got hit. Boom, alert. Oh, it can still keep going. So now you know you're in the money all the way, right? So now you're giving yourself techniques to allow you to maximize your profit, but also pull out in profit just in case. So always add alerts at the TP1 and TP2 levels. They'll expire after they get hit. So TP1 and TP2 levels, if you're going for more, if I'm setting for 50 pips, but my T, uh, I'm not sure at T, I, I'm not sure at 23, I'm putting my T, my, my alert at 23 when, uh, to get notified. So if it gets hit and it rejects the 23 pip level, I'm pulling out profit in my bank, in my pocket, right? But if it breaks my 23 pip level, my TP to get closed out, it's going to go to my primary TP, which is the one I originally wanted and was designated to obtain, right? Does that make sense to everybody? Right. You just do alerts. Like, again, alert yourself. And what I allow you to do is have the trading view app on your phone, because every single time the mark, uh, alert gets hit, you'll get notified on your phone. So if you're out and about with your kids, gym, date, whatever the case may be, what's it going to allow you to do? I'm eating, you know, I'm sitting down eating a chicken parm. Bzz, oh, TP1 alert got hit. OK, cool. Oh, it's rejecting it. Boom, close out. I just paid for dinner in a matter of you know, just not even paying attention to it, but, but setting myself up for future profit just in case the market doesn't go to where I need it to go, right? Just, again, setting yourself up, right? You just want to give yourself the high, the most probable, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, the higher probability of always profiting, right? Always profiting. And that's what I do. Sometimes, listen, I'll take 15 pips. Listen, man, listen, I, I got a baby, I got a lady. She's very demanding when she wants Chick-fil-A. Uh, listen, 15 pips is 15 pips. I'm going to go and get it, okay? So um, any questions with uh, as far as the Forex side uh, before we go into the binary stuff? You start to use alert. No uh, 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 yeah, go ahead, Sean. I was just going to say, no questions um, from me, um, but how are you for time? Because I know we're approaching a 
just under two hours now, um, which is which is amazing value. Like like keep it keep keep coming, keep keep pouring into us. But I just want to check with you and your time, and, and if you're okay. Oh, we're I'm good, man. My ba- baby's fed. She's eating. I'm chilling. Um, I told you yeah, on the prior, I was getting on the call this past week when we were setting it up that I was trying, I was going to give you guys all that I got. You know what I personally do, whether it be forks and HFX, because I know I owed you guys the call. So um, y'all will actually be the first individuals to obtain my HFX strategy, um, my binary strategy, um, and you know it's 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 awesome. Like to, to, to certain disclaimer purposes, past profits are guaranteed future results, but the HFX strategy that I'm gonna give you guys has allowed me to turn a two hundred two hundred dollar account to eighty seven thousand in about four days, um, or technically five, um, right? Five. A whole week, <laughs> a whole week. Um, but I'll give you guys the stuff. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll provide it to you guys. It's, I'll send you guys the information and everything for it. Uh, if you guys want to, Sean, if you're okay with it, not this week, but next week, um, preferably a Tuesday or Wednesday, we can get on. Let's say eight nine in the morning. We can trade HFX together if you guys want, or ten in the morning. We can do the strategy together. Um, we can trade it in the morning. Take two, three, four setups uh, in the morning. If you want, that'd be pretty cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey man, I'm just here to help people win, bro. Listen, everyone's trying, everyone's everyone's trying to eat. You know, I'm just trying to be the chef. You know what I mean? All right. Um. <laughs> all right. So with that being said, any questions, comments, concerns regarding the forex stuff, I will answer it or just you know write it down. And then towards the end, or if you guys have anything in regarding you know uh, stuff after this, just write it down, shoot it to Sean, and you can shoot it to me. You can get another call or recap stuff, whatever you guys want. But nonetheless, what we're going to do is get into binary, okay? So, with this being, again, we're not trading, again, we're not taking any trades right now. The market is looking, I'm not going to, OTC is out here smacking people. We're not doing that right now, okay? So, what we're, this what this is, is my binary strategy. So, I'm a, what I have here, and I'll send it to Sean after this, I have it all ready to go on my Dropbox. Uh, I don't know how to get out of this. How do I get out of it? How do I get out of this? Oh, oh, I'm zoomed all the way in. Jesus. All right. I have the binary strategy here ready to go. Um, let me get the link for this here real quick. I don't think you guys will need a only people invited can edit. I, right? Edit view. Does it matter which one I do? I'll just hit create. Copy link. Cool, cool, cool. And I'll send it to Sean after this. Boom. All right, cool. So give you a breakdown right quick. Right. So basically, this this strategy here is via binary. You're trading on the one minute. Uh, your your chart is always going to be on the one minute time frame, but you're taking two to three minute contracts. The rule of thumb that I abide by, um, and I was taught by again my mentor who taught me forex. Um, he he does rule of thumb. You're taking contracts three times, two to three times larger than what your uh, um. Uh, time frame you're on. So I'm on the one minute time frame. I'm either taking two to three minute contracts. So with this strategy in itself, you're taking two to three minute contracts. So how this is, is all these boxes you see on the screen, they're reversal zones. They're price supply and demand zones already drawn up and ready implemented on the screen for you. Uh, what's happened? Ready, already implemented on the screen for you. Of course, the market is looking super crappy right now. That's without a doubt. All right, super crappy. But nonetheless, um, there's drawn up on the screen for you. I don't know why my, I don't know why the screen looks like that. Okay, right on the screen for you. They're supplying demand zones. So the initial idea behind this is, let me bring this up on here. The initial idea behind this is when the market hits these zones, right? You're looking for a reversal, right? But then down here, you have somewhat of a checklist, right? You have this down here. It's called the MBFX timing, which kind of works in, in somewhat a sense of like a MACD and stochastic, right? And in and, and collaboration, all right? So you kind of have the MAC, uh, MBFX timing and you also have the, Stochastic, right? Stochastic setting is set at 533. What I'm going to give you guys, you guys don't have to do anything. Legit, you guys don't have to do anything in regards to uh, any settings because I'm giving you guys this precise template and the indicators. So how this would work is you go to indicators list, make sure you download all of this, you import it into your MT4, all right? And then you import this template onto your MT4, so now when you come onto your MT4, all you have to do is open this template on the chart and everything's already built in, settings, everything's good to go. You don't have to do it, touch anything um, or, or, or change anything. Everything's already built into it. So 
you don't have to add anything or configure anything. Okay, what's the settings? You're already gonna receive it. Okay, so these zones here is what we're looking at. Let's go, like, let's go, let's work over here, right? So what we're looking at here is the, these zones. The market has to enter one of these zones. These are supply and demand zones. The colors do uh, uh, mean something, right? The colors do mean something. They all mean reversals, but they do mean something, right? The more important aspect of is when the market hits. Uh, um, uh, supply and demand, no matter what color essentially it may it may be, right? You're looking for a reversal. So checklist number one is the market has to be entering a supply and demand zone. Checklist number two, the market has to be breaking the Keltner channel, right? This here is a Keltner channel, not a Bollinger. It's a Keltner channel. The market has to be breaking a Keltner channel. All right. In this case, it's breaking a Keltner channel, right? Number checklist number three, the MBFX has to be going right has to be on the oversold oversold but you see this little blue line down here this little blue line right here right that's a transitioning period meaning it's transitioning from bears to bulls right it's going to transition from bears to bulls actually make it a little clearer for you um can I change this red i can turn this red right yes i can right from bears to bulls all right so market has to be in the supply zone, right? Demand zone has to be breaking out of the Keltner channel, has to be transitioning from bear from uh um from uh well this blue period is transitioning period or the oversold area, right? The stochastic, what just happened? The stochastic has to be on and the 53 has to be underneath the oversold, which is the 20, and also curving. So for example, if I put my horizontal line here, uh There we go. Boom. Uh, boom. Right? Zoom in. There we go. Right? Broke out of the Keltner. It's in the supply zone. Came down into the MBFX. It's in the oversold. Hit the transitioning period. The stochastic is doing what? Crossing underneath the oversold area as well. I'm looking. I'm waiting for this candle to close. I'm entering my contract. The, the new candle open, which will be here. Three minutes in, one, two, three, clear, right? One, two, three, one and done with. Up here, same thing. What happened over here, right? To give you another, uh, to give you a head, uh, uh, just a quick tip, when, there's, when the stuff's here in the middle, don't get two hoots. Don't care, right? I'm only looking for the setup when they set up for the quality, when they're quality setups, right? When the quality set, when they're set up here, Okay, when they're set up right here in the middle, right? When I'm sorry, when they're not set up here in the middle, don't care, right? But when they're set up precisely at my initial price levels, all right, within my demand zone. So for example, up here, market hit our demand, right? MBF uh, broke out of our Keltner channel. MBFX hit what? The blue transition period is gonna go from bulls to bears, right? The stochastic started doing what? Hit the overbought. Cross and started curving. Entries at the new candle, uh, the can uh, close of this candle, right? One, two, three, clear. Then you have one a couple minutes later. One, two, three, clear, right? And you have one over here. Let's go over here right now, right? Well, let's you know this because this is market closing. So, what's also what's awesome um, about this also is we added or I added this these arrows right these arrows are kind of sig uh they're not alerts for you to get into a trade but they're giving you a heads up that momentum is going to shift soon so for example you see how this called here but the setup didn't happen over here see how this was called here and this was actually was called on price right this was called here but it never broke out of the keltner so you kind of have to kind of depict which areas to take trades from but again i'll provide this template for you guys <clears throat> let's go to a different pair so this is ugly Let's go to a, let's go, let's go here, right? Let's go up there or it sucks. The market is so iffy here right now. Let me see. Um, let's go down here. Where's my, um, hold on. There we go. Cool. All right. So we're over here now. All right. Awesome. Where's our support? Um, okay. 
right? So here, checklist number one. Now I'll, I'll type it on the screen. Um, let me just go to a different. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna type this up real quick. All right, market has to be entered. All right, market has to be entered. Has to be in zone two has to have broken on their channel three mbfx has to be either oversold or over bought going into blue, uh, blue transition or stochastic has to be in oversold or over bought and crossing. Okay, an extra confirmation um, if there is if the, if it does pop up is extra confirmation is arrows. Oh wait, uh, here goes. All right, this would be kind of your checklist right here. Let me send you guys this here. Uh, there you guys, that should work. You guys should, let me know if you guys received it. All right, so again, same thing. Let me open up a different pair. Let's go to GBP AUD. All right, let's go to GBP AUD real quick. All right, so same thing on GBP AUD in a sort of sense, right? If I go over here on GBP AUD, again, the market is a, bit, was a little iffy diffy here, but nonetheless, um, GBP AUD, what do we have? All right, GBP AUD, market, and let's look up here, or oh, there's a big drop. We could technically look here. All right, we could take a look there or up here. Let's go where the arrow's at, All right? The arrow called, we know that we're gonna get a call, a, 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 a reversal zone. Market entered the zone, market entered zone, right here right mbfx is entering the transition period it's in the overbought stochastic is crossing right it broke the keltner enter trade let's say you know like you can't see the line there let's change the color to the line let's make it the uh, blue right can't really see that one either but it's fine boom one two three you would have cleared it with a little bit of space right you would have cleared it right there Let's go to the one down here. You wouldn't have seen the the zone the, the zones erase because all this over here is the one and done with already. They only keep up with what the current market structure is, right? So over here, what do we have over here? Market broke the Keltner way over here. The blue signal got called, right? But we said going down, we broke the Keltner, broke the Keltner, right? Say so again the call there. The blue transitioning period started happening right over here, okay? The stochastic started crossing and pushing above right here. Let's say we even would have entered this candle over here or the bottom low over here. One, two, three, cleared. Or if you entered here, one, two, three, clear. Right? That's it. That's all you're waiting for. And what this does also is I have alerts set. So you saw the little box that popped up in the left hand side of the window. It'll alert you when the a setup is a setup is being met. Right? There it goes right there. Boom. G A. GA literally just hit that hit that zone and gave you a gave you a, a call. But again, we're not taking trades right now because it's at the market OTC. But look, boom, hit the zone. We're hitting the overbought, hitting the overbought, right? And if this was regular market in the morning, then I'm looking to take a sell, right? I only trade binary from after my session, so 8 a.m. Eastern to about 11, give or take. But if there's major liquidity and major news coming out, I'm not. Uh, I wait for it to end and then I take the trade. This is my HFX strategy. So you guys are getting legitimately a private one. This is my HFX strategy. Um, so you guys are getting, so any questions regarding this or far, right? This is like, we can do a live training, live trading session in the morning next week, uh, like Tuesday or Wednesday, preferably. No, no. My baby's off the puppies on when? Monday. So Tuesday or Wednesday next week, 9, 10 a.m. We can get on early tomorrow morning. We can trade this lively if you guys want. Take two, three setups, two, four setups. All right. So I'll be sending you guys this. Again, this is my private one. I, 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 I it's funny enough because I was actually taught binary before Forex 12 years ago or 2000, 2012. I'm sorry. I was actually taught that 
um, uh, binary before Forex. I just threw the binary to the side and focused so solely on Forex and then picked up a, a binary um, a year, eight months ago, nine months ago, little little less than that, right? So you, this is my private strategy. So I'll be, I'll be giving, again, this is very easy. You guys have the checklist, very easy, right? Um, as far as the understanding of it. The major key of this is, is the patience. You gotta be patient. Let the setup come to you, right? Let the setup come to you here. Market broke out of the Keltner. You got the arrow. Market broke the, into the zone, that candle right here. Where's it at? Uh, right here, right? Market broke the, into the zone right here. Starting again, the blue transition period. The stochastic started crossing. Enter the trade, new candle open. One, two, three, clear. Right? And you can, you can actually re-enter trades too, but uh, that's it. Again, this is easy. This was this was again. This has allowed me to again turn the account to you know from two hundred bucks to little, little over eighty in a matter of a week, right? But that was me grinding though. But that was like me grinding. That was me on here, in there, you know, on it, right? On it. Uh, honey, I'm hungry. Let me order you some food. Come on, getting up right now, right? Like this before the baby was born too. So, yeah, Sean Phil. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but. Nonetheless, that is a strategy. I will be providing the link to you guys right about... Uh, Sean, do you want me to send them the link? Do you want me to send you the link? Let me ask that first. So I have a question now. Talk to me, I'm here. Yeah, so the, the template that you, you mentioned, it would be MT4 for the desktop, and you look at what's going on over there, and then you place the trade on one of the HFX brokers. Yeah, so I trade off I trade off uh, Qualtex and Pocket Options. I trade both of them. Um, okay. I like Pocket Options. I like Pocket Options a lot because it, it has its own social trader, so you're allowed to link accounts. Like, so I have you know whatever it is. So uh, I look on MT4. So I look at the highest paying pairs as a percentages. All right, so it'll be they say Euro AUD eighty percent, GBP AUD ninety percent, whatever the highest paying pairs is. Um, I star them on Pocket Options. I star them as my favorites. And then I go to MT4 and open them up at the bottom. And I'll just transition between both of them, transition between all of them and take my trades accordingly from there. If I see GA lining up, boom, go to pocket options, click GA, enter my buy or sell contract after the new, uh, after the new, after that, that one minute candle closes on a two, three minute contract. Boom, done. All right. So it's quick, easy back and forth. That's why having like, I have multiple screens. So like I have like the MetaTrader 4 running over here but I have the pocket options running right here. So I have this running, switching back and forth, and then I'll have this running to entering my trades. So I'm never missing back and forth trying to flip or have my laptop running and then have the computer running, right? So it kind of goes back and forth. Um, but again, it's easy. If you add three, four trades a day, right? Two, three trades a day, four trades a day for your binary compounding. Um, Maddie Pips actually um, provided a compounding sheet. Do you guys have that? Do you guys have the compounding sheet for... Some of us do. Yeah, we do. We do. It's yeah, on the website, about... everyone. It's on the, yeah, it's on the website. Is it this one? No. Yeah. Oh, this is the compounding one. So the daily, let's say daily interest rate, um, uh, interest rate percentage, you want to do 3%, 2% a day, long term. I want to do it for, let's say, 90 days. Daily reinvestment. I'm reinvesting 100% of my uh, I'm reinvesting 100% of my profit, including weekends. Definitely not. Calculate now on $1,000, 2% a day, long term, 90 days, right? Uh, daily re, uh, reinvestment. I'm reinvesting everything. I'm not withdrawing. $1,000. Uh, your principal amount growth would be $5,943.10, right? So you kind of have, so, you know, if you want to do 10% a day, you're more than welcome to do 10% a day. Hit calculate now. Your initial goal will be that, right? So again, you kind of have to pick and choose, be realistic but this is the compounding sheet that we use. Do you guys want this as well? Yeah, please. Yeah, I'll send it to you. All right. I'm just giving you guys everything today. So, so go. blessed. So blessed. I don't know what to start <laughs> yeah, guys. I, I, I was not expecting this. I was not expecting this. This this has gone way, way beyond expectations. Um, you know, you, I'm, I've, you know, I'm a big fan of yours from, from day dot, but this has been another level. Oh, no. Yeah, I appreciate it. I owed you guys this training and I told, like I told you, Sean, I saw, I'm going to come on here and give you all that I, I got. Again, we're, as educators, we're here to chef it up so everyone else can eat and also whether it being pips or knowledge. And again, I, I 
keeping things like for me, like keeping shit private is for me. I, I, I'm sorry, excuse me, I cursed. I apologize. Keeping things private, it's, it's, it, for me, it's like it become it's selfish, especially from the background I came in. I was very selfish with my time, with my, with my, with my attention, with things that I was doing, which hurt everybody around me. So now, now I'm just like, eh, create something, put something together. I'm winning, but also seeing others win is me paying back for things that I've done back in the day. Right. So just paying, not paying it forward. Right. Always a student. And, you know, just being a servant to the people and helping people just eat because everyone wants to change their life and get out of whatever endeavor they're in or financial situation. And if we're the leaders that have done that, then and we're we, the individuals who have done that. Let's be leaders so other people can do it, too. So that's just my that's just how my perspective on it is. So but that's basically it, guys. You guys got everything. Wow, guys, no guys, I, I think we need to throw some some tens, some hundreds of thousands in the chat for Kevin, because that was phenomenal. I appreciate you guys. Guys, in the chat, I dropped the uh, compound sheet and then also um, dropping the Dropbox. Like, I actually will send it over to Sean as well um, for individuals who may have not received it or whoever you, I don't, whoever the hell you want to give it to. Um, you're more than, essentially more than welcome to. Um, and, yeah, I just dropped it in the chat. And then if you guys want to schedule, Sean, to schedule like a, a, a binary trading call next week, next morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, uh, we can get on, run it for like 30 minutes, take two or three, four setups, and then walk away with, you know, a blue bag, really. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so, so much. Um, I, I'm literally lost for words. That, that, that doesn't happen often, but that was, yeah, different class, different, different class. Yeah. Um, yeah. Servant, I appreciate servant. you. Um, if you guys, if you need anything else, man, you can message me, bro. Perfect. Perfect. All right, okay, well, thank you so way, much. Thank you, thank you Kevin. That's brilliant, man. Thank I appreciate you, you guys. Yeah. No problem, problem. I'll see you guys tonight for, for Tokyo session. I'm there, you know me. <laughs> ah, all right, how about this, Sean? How about this? Hit me up twenty uh, five minutes before the session. I'll get you on a Zoom. We we'll run it together. Woo! I made wow. it. Wow! <laughs> so we're not man, alone. Dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm on. I'm definitely on. All right, bro. So remember, it's 8, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, uh, ten minutes before. Message me. We'll get on a Zoom together and we'll run it on go live together. Wicked, wicked. Wow. wicked yeah. my, my go live debut, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what that you, you know what that means, right? What does that mean? You mean <laughs> you gotta call the I means you gotta call the trade, bro. Come on. Don't worry, man. Don't worry. I got I got my PRZ zones. I got my supply <laughs> okay. <of> the guns. <laughs> All right, look guys. at Sean getting into educator mode. We've been calling that though. <laughs> We're gonna see him. He's gonna come dressed up in a in a whole suit, you know, everything. He's gonna go shave before he gets on. I'm like, dog, they're not they're, they're not gonna see your face. But okay. <laughs> All right, guys. I appreciate you guys. Um, have a beautiful and blessed evening. I see you tonight. Sean, we'll talk in a couple of hours, dog. I'm gonna go get something to eat. Have a beautiful and blessed day, guys. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, All God bless, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, 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 Daddy Thank P. Thank you, amazing. That's it, that's it. Go live next. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Thank Big you. Mr. Uh, Miss, Mr. Educator. Uh, no, that, that was way more Listen, than I Listen, I'm going to have to give you another name, though. Another name? Yeah, because cause <laughs> no, no, you're an educator, so we're going to have to find a new name. <laughs> Keep calling me Sean. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> that's it. That, that seems that seems too basic now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Go live debut. Wicked. Oh, Tash is entering the waiting room. Hey, Sean. What times is you, with, um? What times is Asian session? Like uh, UK time? Uh, I'll have to check. That's a good question. It better not be in the morning. Like early in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Sean, for <laughs> organizing this. This was so. This was so good. Yeah. Yeah, really good, really, really good. I'm, I'm gonna be rewatching this recording. I think he's one of those people that kind of goes like unnoticed on the platform. Um, but he's he's different class. He really is. I think we can stop the recording now, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>